be a straight shooter. When you were seeing my pictures back in the night, is what did you say? I, uh, no, this, I said this, this guy, guy's uh, got great abs, but he's just <laughs> way smaller than everyone else. <laughs> great abs, but way smaller. All right, so here we are, episode uh, 24, Cutler Cast. We have a special, special guest. I mean, this is someone we talk about all the time on the yeah. podcast anyway, but Milos Sarsev, what's happening, man? Yeah, Jay, thank you for inviting me. Matt, also, I am dying to be on this uh, podcast. I mean, I'm dying to talk to you. I know you since 96, basically. First time I've seen you. I don't know if you even remember. Uh, you were training in uh, Venice Golds, and uh, you know everybody's talking about this kid. And you know, I looked at it, and... Um, let me tell you, I mean, I'm honest, as you know. I said, like, okay, you know, he's good, great, but, you know, I don't think in the 90s with uh, uh, Kevin and Sean and, yeah, yeah. and Flex and uh, Nasser and everybody else, like, okay, he's not going to really leave the impact. Well, you, I mean, your ego, where well, you were still competing then, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. you, were, you were considered a front front guy, and uh, I had a great haircut, though, didn't I? Yeah, you did, <laughs> you did. <laughs> you know, but, but you see, uh, sometimes you see some... Uh, guys that potentials but you don't really you know say okay he can be mr olympia so at that time if somebody would tell me this guy is going to be mr olympia i would say no way you know that this is how i saw it but then when you start developing right and especially as we talk about 2001 when you stood on that stage right next to ronnie coleman and i said the instantly first second jay won the show and this is when you came up to the eighth place in 2000 right and yeah. then 99 can I say you were like 15 out of 16? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should it have what you were, were you in 99? You were 10th. Yeah, I was 10th. Yeah, yeah. I was so tenth. that means that means you're better than Jay. Yeah. <laughs> I tell this to my daughter every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your daughter was my biggest. Your biggest fan, was, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, listen, you beat me. We're going to cut this straight up. <laughs> straight up. Milos has beat me four times on the competitive no, stage. No, three out of four. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah. Olympia 99. Yeah. The Nether Champions 98, your pro debut. Yes. Yes. I thought we tied, bro. Yeah, we tied. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. We were eleven. We were eleven. <laughs> there was uh, highs and lows. We had the same amount of points, but then the highs and lows, you know, gives the favor to one guy. So I, I was officially, you know, in front of. <laughs> so he got an extra win by default. I'll take it. I don't care. There's the same amount of points, you know. That they gave it to me. So listen, we were both pissed that we got eleventh, right? It was my debut. Yeah, yeah. You were definitely pissed. You got eleven. So uh, yeah, I was uh, not uh, too happy, right? But I tell you. 98, because 97 was, I think, my best year. And uh, I won Canada and went to Nato Champions and, and played second, close second to uh, Chris Cormier. You know, it could go either way, really. I, I, I thought that was my best. So 98, my wife was pregnant, and uh, due date was Nato Champions. So I didn't sign the contracts. Back then, you remember, you had yeah, to you sign the contracts. Trouble, yeah. Yeah, and then if you don't, you You're get fine, in trouble. Yeah. So I said, I didn't. And then uh, uh, my wife was uh, two and a half weeks uh, early. So, oh, okay. And then, like, in three days from that day, there was a San Francisco Pro. I didn't really train for the contest, and I, d I didn't even plan it, right? But you're always in shape. I mean, I was in decent shape. So I decided to enter uh, San Francisco, and I was top five. And then I went to uh, uh, Canada, and I, I think I was uh, seventh there. And then I went to uh, Night of the Champions. Champions. Yeah. And that was the time when they had the diuretic testing, and... Um, so we experimented with different things. At that show, I, I wanted to try these plasma expanders and, uh, and Manitol, yeah, the yeah. osmotic diuretic. And it was one of those things that you look at yourself in the mirror like one hour before the show. Oh, yeah, hell yeah, right? And then you go backstage and you take the clothes off and say, what the that hell? Happened, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah th this is how it was. So I didn't like that. But then... Uh, uh, 98 Olympia, yeah, I entered and uh, I was 11th. Uh, but there was just not enough time, and there was uh, a lot of things. I lost the metrics contract, and then Weeder gave me like half of what I was making with the uh, metrics, so it was kind of stressful. In 99, Iron Man, I know that you were going in, and uh, Chris Cormier yeah. and Lee Priest and Gunter, you know, Darren Charles, like, lineup was crazy, so I said, I have to make a difference. So I blew myself up, as you know, my yeah. insulin protocols and everything, you know, because uh, uh, Iron Man lights favor 
full guys. OFF, yeah. yeah. So you came ripped to the bone. Yeah. And uh, condition-wise, you out-condition all of us. Gunther was also good. Yeah, if you, if you structure remember, structure was a little limited, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Structure, yeah. He he's, uh, yeah, he's a big guy, and uh, he's another guy that I would say, I would never think that he can uh, win the Olympia with uh, his structure. But then he came close. But at that show, I remember after the uh, finals, Chris uh, Cedo came. Uh, we were there together. And he goes, "You two guys are most underrated." Uh, bodybuilders. Uh, I remember the, him saying this very well. Meaning who? You and you I? You and I, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. And that's coming from, from Chris. Obviously, Chris was working with you. And uh, then we went to um, Arnold Classic. Arnold Classic. Right? He beat me there. <laughs> Probably by a point. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't much. I think I so was. So he's one point away from you. So I was for fourth. Yeah, that was so back, uh, what, what, what was cool back then, we qualified. And we'll talk a little bit about yeah. the difference. Um, Qualifi qualification was top five, right? I think top three at the Ironman and then uh, top 10 at the Olympia. Yes. So that allotted us, and it was kind of a breather for a lot of us because the contracts relied on it, right? Yes, big time. Especially if you're a weeder contract. I don't know about you, but I didn't sign a multi-year weeder deal. I was year to year. Oh, yeah. I so, mean, uh, I, I don't know. You are most marketable guy, so you could do that. You can afford these kind of things because you can negotiate uh, better contracts. Uh, we didn't have that commodity. I, I was looking for a long time contract. Yeah, and then, you know, pretty much you accept something that is not great but decent that uh, you can live. You know, because uh, you know, I, I jump in to to tell you my my story. Uh, when I was coming back from uh, Serbia, I actually uh, I have those journals, famous journals. You mm. know, I was handwritten journals. On the first in 1987, I wrote a five year plan. I'm going to come to the United States, which was almost impossible from uh, Yugoslavia at the time, socialistic country with communist government, you know, to get the visa for America. It was like dream about it. But so I want to come to America. I want to win Miss Universe. I want to uh, turn professional. And I want to compete in Olympia. I want to make a living off of bodybuilding in five-year plan. This is it. So my goal was that. But when I told this to people in my country, they were laughing like, "What are you gonna do? Come to America and and." <laughs> what was it? What was it like growing up in in Serbia mm. back then? Because they were still part of the USSR then at that time. No, no, yes, no, they're different, but oh. it's similar. I mean, we okay. we had a communistic party, you know, okay. as a, as a ruling uh, governor, so uh, super strict, super restricted, and you know. Uh, when the economy is bad and uh, when you can make hardly to uh, make ends meet, obviously you don't have a commodity of doing anything else. So how I got uh, introduced to bodybuilding, right? My father put me in uh, judo. Uh, first, uh, first was actually karate. But then uh, uh, after two years, I realized karate was not uh, Olympic sport. So I said, okay, you know, I want to represent my country. I want to go to, and I'm going to go to judo. So I went to judo which I trained for eight years, uh, there was uh, some weightlifting. And, and then one day, I seen some magazine, right? There was no magazines in Serbia <laughs> at that time. I said, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Like, oh, my God. I mean, really, there was moments and say, a oh, human body can look like that? Mm. I mean, this is 80s, right? Uh, actually, sorry, that's 70s now, 70s. And it's like, oh, my God, th this, this is possible? And then I look at Serge Nombre and uh, Frank Zane. All the at this time. I was a teenager, you know, 13, 14, yeah. But, you know, actually, uh, it was already 16, 17. But the second I seen this one, I was like, oh, my God, instantly, I want to look like that. You know, that was like awakening. Oh, a human body can actually look like that? And I'm sure that many people back then, especially in my country, they, they, they didn't even think about it. But where are you going to train, you know? So there's no gyms, there's nothing. So we make up uh, like uh, concrete plates and, and we didn't have a bench, you just put the board <laughs> on some bricks. And uh, I mean, this is how we train. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I had a specific goal. I, I don't know why. I mean, uh, right now when um, I look back, I never doubted for one second that I'm gonna achieve that. See, I, I never put the plan, I'm gonna win Mr. Olympia, that's why I, I really, you know, greatly admire you. Uh, I have no idea what it feels like to actually be the best in the world. Maybe I set my goals kind of short, you know, because I would just want to be one of the guys and qualify for Olympia. And as you say about this qualification thing, besides Sean Ray, 
I'm the only one that uh, qualified for every Olympia in the 90s. Every single Olympia I qualified. I didn't compete uh, 95 and 96 because I chose not to, you know, because they were going for uh, mass monsters. And I said, like, uh, uh, I would rather go to Europe and make uh, a guest posing money. I could, I could make, uh, you know, pretty well. Instead of competing and maybe placing 10th and, and being, what, $10,000? Back then it was 5000 So, uh, yeah, the, the thing is, I did very much believe I'm going to accomplish all that, but I never really put that the goal of winning Olympia. But yeah. for you to maybe understand it, I had a $428.10 in my pocket. Coming to America, I didn't speak English <laughs> whatsoever, right? And... Uh, as I competed in this different federation, WPF, AAU, uh, I was in European Championship in uh, Italy, and uh, a president of federation said, oh my God, you know, here is an invitation for the Miss Universe in Tucson, Arizona. Carlos Rodriguez, he was a promoter, he used to be IBB Olympia competitor. So I said, oh, this is great. With this invitation, I went to actually uh, embassy and I got the visa, like, oh my God. I got a visa. Now I have to buy the ticket. I can't ask my parents, you know, for, for that, that they would never approve it. So I said, okay. But there was a one contest, 87, uh, in uh, Yugoslavia, that the winner was supposed to get uh, $1,100 equivalent in uh, Serbian money. So I went to that show, and I'm Serbian, right? And uh, then you have a Bosnian Croatian uh, competitors. Uh, there was uh, five judges, three Serbians, and uh, Croatian and Slovenia. Croatia, Croatia and Slovenia gave me the overall victory, and all three Serbians uh, voted against me, so I didn't win. <laughs> so it's like, oh man! So now I, I can't buy a ticket, you know, to to uh, U.S. But then this Croatian and uh, and um, uh, Slovenian promoters they invite me for guest posings, for you know some pictures with the with the uh, weights and um, I made enough money just to buy the ticket, and that's uh, my father was not a psychiatrist. My mother is a general practitioner, so they want me, of course, to be uh, academic like them. So they, I didn't finish my uh, university. So I said, like, no, you you can't go. I said, I want to go. This is once in a lifetime opportunity. No, no, you can't go. You know, we're not going to give you money. So I said, here is first. You're not going to get the visa. So I showed them a passport. And then you're not gonna. How are you gonna buy a ticket? I already bought it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, that that was that was major thing for them. But I said, okay, my father was. I see you in a week. Like, what I'm gonna do there? I had a four hundred twenty-eight dollars, right? And in Europe, a promoter paid for my hotel and everything. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of expecting in in America too. But no, you know, I came there and uh, it basically two nights. It was two hundred something dollars. So now I'm like down to two hundred. And it's supposed to make a living. But uh, when I was in that European Championship, I couldn't afford the flight. I was on a boat from Italy back to uh, uh, Serbia. Bari in uh, Italy and Bar is in Serbia, in Montenegro, actually. So on the way back, I couldn't afford a cabin. So I was just uh, <laughs> on the top. And there was two beautiful girls, right? You know, unreal. And they were both seasick, puking, like <laughs> they, they couldn't even, you know, get the hold of them. So, so I went there just to, you know, help. I don't speak English or nothing. So as I was hanging out with them a little bit, you know, until they, they got better, in the morning they came out of cabin and said, where are you going? So they were going to Dubrovnik, you know, in Croatia. So I said, okay, uh, I'll go with them. And they basically gave me the address. If you ever come to the United States, they're in San Diego. So as a matter of fact, I came to the United States, but yeah. now I'm in the Phoenix. <laughs> so I just flew to uh, San Diego and called them. And um, there it is. They really helped me. And, uh, really? That, that's how it happened, yeah. And we were talking about earlier, there's always an element of luck to every story. It is. <laughs> every I, story. I mean, so speaking no English, not knowing anybody, okay, which uh, <laughs> I didn't realize at the time, those two were in Europe on the, their bachelorette, trips <laughs> because before they get married right you know but uh, they they did actually help me and uh, they let me stay with them and uh, 
I even got a job. I mean, uh, put it this way. When you speak no English, Tarzan English, you know, count to 10, I love you, fuck you, excuse my language. I mean, th <laughs> this is this is the extent of my knowledge. And say, okay, there is a gym. There was Jack Lane's at Midway Drive in San Diego. Yeah, yeah. Just go there for interview. I said, okay, what am I going to do in an interview? But I was 23 years old, right? And uh, in uh, Mr. Mr. Universe shape. And uh, of course, there was some cougar <laughs> manager you know that as soon as she saw me she was just blabbing all that all the thing that i was doing is yes 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 i didn't even know what the hell she was yeah. saying so girl that was with me she goes okay you got the job monday you start working so i didn't have a permission to work so okay give me social security number and i was like yeah, awesome, i don't have yeah. it so I used the social security number of that girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh you know. Hey, yeah. this is a long time ago, though. It's you have to survive. Yeah. But the problem was that uh, you don't get the paycheck uh, 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 until two weeks later. Yeah. And I literally ran out of money. So my diet was starvation. I mean, uh, yeah. And uh, I, I'm going to be even bold enough to, to say the truth. Uh my father raised me, of course, never steal, never uh, lie and, and uh, be honest and giving and good person, right? But one time I overheard him, the hungry person that steals the food is not a thief. It's justified, you know? Okay. So I would go. <laughs> so I would go You're to You're a the criminal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, confession. Uh, so I would go to a supermarket, right? And as you're going through the, you know, aisles, and this is, I would get the muffins, and I would literally inhale them. Uh, you can't even enjoy them and chew them slowly. I would just inhale them. Th this is how I survived. You so know? you just walked up and down the aisle? Yeah, the down the aisle. Just just you know, shade. Of course, you know, you know, when you're not that kind of person, you're embarrassed as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, hey, necessity is mother of all, uh, all inventions, right? Yeah. That, that, was, uh, that was a must for me. But I, I did get the job, and... Uh, I uh, imagine so. Uh, minimum uh, rate was three twenty-five an hour. That was um, the wages. Rate, the wages, yeah. But they hired me from twelve to twelve for forty dollars, minus taxes. Right? <laughs> so I was making pretty much nothing, right? And then I have to train. So I say, okay, well, you know, you can come uh, train before, or you can stay after. And then they gave me opportunity to do the personal training before and after. So I would come at 5 o'clock in the morning to train, then train a couple of clients, then work 10 to 10, then uh, train myself, and then go home. I slept maybe three hours uh, in average. How long did you do this for? year and a half. So you weren't body, you weren't really chasing a bodybuilding career as much but at I, this I, point, right? I was. I mean, I was competing. I was training for me. So 87, when I came, I was sixth. 88, I was uh, third. And then 89, I won. Okay. Now, what show is that? That's uh, WPF universe. universe. Okay. So now, so I accomplished that, uh, on my list, right? I, I came to America. Now I won Miss Universe. You're that pro was professional or? I said, now I have to turn professional. But in Serbia, I didn't know that IBB was uh, yes. leading. What do you know? So I was competing in this other federation, thinking this is the best. But then I realized it's not. And then uh, I went to some NPC shows and I've seen uh, uh, IBB or Olympia. So, oh, shit. 98, there was uh, Olympia in, uh, 88 in uh, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. which I won, uh, which I went to see. And, <laughs> and I said, like, okay, I, I have to be on the stage within three years. And uh, 91, I was on the stage. But how do I get the pro card? So uh, in one of the NPC shows, I went to Wayne Emilia and uh, introduced myself. Like, look, I'm uh, you know, from Yugoslavia. There was no Serbia, right? from Yugoslavia, and uh, I competed in this other federation, but how can I turn pro? So he says, oh, there was no phones back in the day. He said, you have any pictures? I said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I got prepared, and I gave him pictures from Las Vegas uh, Classic I, I entered in 89. So I was doing show every week also. I went to Atlanta, Georgia for... So you're doing, co you just compete in NPC even though you have yeah. a pro card in... Yeah. Uh, I in the, uh, the other organization. Yeah, I, I didn't get the pro card in the other organization. Oh, okay. I just competed there. But then I competed in some Anaheim Iron Man, Iron Maiden show that was not NPC. I, I didn't know anything. And then I finally competed at NPC. I won overall at the Coastal USA, uh, 89. 
I competed with the uh, flex filler in uh, uh, California, state champion that he won. I was fourth in the heavyweights. But then uh, I, I did the, I came to Vegas just to, to be in Vegas. And then I heard there was a show. I said, oh, let Stevie me enter Tarr it. probably ran it. Yeah. Then, yeah. So I, I was there. I said, okay, I had opposing trunks and I went there and I won that. And there was like national qualifier. So they gave me uh, money for a trip to North Carolina for <laughs> 89 uh, USA. I, I don't think it was nationals. I think it was actually USA in the East Coast, which is usually the, the opposite, right? Oh, then there was nationals. Uh, so I went there, you know, and I'm pumping up backstage. And uh, so somebody came up and said, hey, what's your name? So Milo Sharchev. I said, doesn't sound American, right? Yeah, hey, you're American? I said, no. Are you a resident? No. What the hell are you doing here? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> so, so I was there. I was on the stage initially, right? But when I got off the stage, they told me, like, hey, man, you're just supposed to compete. And then I didn't compete. But to go back to Wayne D'Amelia, I, I gave Wayne D'Amelia my pictures from uh, Steve Carr's show. Yeah. And he goes, oh, wait a minute. So he goes to Jim Mannion and show the pictures. And he came back to me and he says, okay. Tell your uh, IBB Federation from uh, Yugoslavia to send a recommendation letter and uh, we'll let you compete. It's like, oh my God. I mean, this is how many uh, international athletes got it. Like, uh, Sonny Schmidt from Australia, right? Uh, Dorian, he won British Championship. So, of course, in US, you can win overall USA or uh, nationals uh, each category, right? And then there was North American. North Americans yeah. overall. Yeah, so, so this is how I got the pro card, you know. <laughs> lengthy, lengthy process. I mean, people don't realize com coming from out of the country, it's it's difficult. But it sounded like, you know, you came here with a dream. Yeah. And uh, you know, they granted you the pro status now, and you're in California. I mean, it's a hotbed. Yeah. You were in like that time, and I think that was around the time. Like, I think 1990 was around the time the WBF came yeah. launched, and like, who was like you went to this 88 Olympia. Hmm? Haney won. Haney Mike, won. Mike Christian second. No, no. The uh, uh, second was Gaspari. Third was Barry De May. Fourth was Labrada, and uh, fifth was uh, Mike Quinn. Sixth was uh, Brian Buchanan. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, Christian didn't compete at that Olympia. Yeah, I, I loved Mike Christian. He competed. Uh, you know. How many guys yeah. were in the Olympia that back then? As many as we have now, is it like sixteen to twenty guys, or was it less? At that Olympia, that was about 15, yeah. Okay. It was. It was, yeah. And uh, a lot of those guys were training in California. So it, mm -hmm. at this point, had you visited Gold's Gym Venice? No, no actually, uh, I never went. Uh, first time I actually went was 91 when I did my photo shoot for Flex Magazine. I, I never went to, uh, even though I was invited many times, I was in San Diego. And, you know, when you're a personal trainer and you work six days a week. Yeah. You know, you don't, you know, you don't want to have that And drive. were you training at that gym that you were managing, like working the desk or doing a personal training yeah, at? Yeah, that was uh, Jacqueline Lane's. And uh, did you, was there the World Gym yet or the Gold's Gym in San Diego? Was that, I know you end up training yeah, there later, but. Yeah, uh, uh, Rick Stevenson Gym, uh, yeah. yeah, it was. Um, Rick, but I was just hired there. I was working there and. Equipment was great. You know, I didn't have a reason to go anywhere. And by yeah. this point, you were learning to speak English, yeah. obviously. And yeah. So, by the way, I mean, literally speaking, now when this lady told me, Monday, you're supposed to work, I said, oh, my God, what am I going to do? So, let me, you know, learn some words. So, uh, <laughs> push, pull, <laughs> squeeze, this kind of thing, right? And I really, you know, when, when, you, when you don't have a sense for language, and I don't think I do, it's very hard. Like, I, I was in Spain and Dominican Republic one year in, in, in each country, and I didn't learn Spanish. I mean, I don't, just don't have that skill. But here, there was nobody to speak Serbian, and I just had to learn. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody there in the gym was helpful. You know, like uh, when I was training somebody, I can't really express myself. They said, oh, shit. Then let me do the exercise in front of them and then do the same. I could say that, do the same. Right? So I would do the exercise and... Uh, and they were helpful, and of course, next thing you know, you don't even realize you, you're communicating. Yeah, when was your first pro show? 91, uh, San Jose. And, and uh, that's also a story. Uh, my father, shortly before, got the um, uh, stroke. And of course, uh, so first, um, he had the amputated left leg, 
And then when he got the stroke, his right side got paralyzed. So you can imagine. You know, the only thing that he had left was uh, left arm. So my mom was taking care of him. He was, you know, quite heavy, so she needed my help. So I came home, and um, after the stroke, you never know if you're going to rehabilitate completely, if you're going to recover. So everything was going quite slow. And I said, okay, you know, I, I would train at night when he goes to sleep. And uh, I didn't really plan you know, any competitions or anything, but uh, 17 days before the San Jose Pro Show, uh, as he was doing better, and my, f my mother and father said, okay, go, you know, live your life, you know, he's going to be okay. So 17 days before, I, I went back to San Diego and, and realized there is a show, and you, I don't have to pay too much money for a hotel and flight. Let me do it. So I went to that show really uh, not expecting anything. Zero. I mean, I just like, okay, I have a pro card, you know, might as well test the waters. And uh, there was uh, Albert Beckless competing and uh, John Brown. There was Ron Love, Sonny Schmidt, Franco Centuriello, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Steve Brisbane. I mean, Tim Belknap, which I watched uh, win uh, um, in Yugoslavia. He won a world championship. So when I went on the stage, uh, there was a friend of mine that hey, just, you know, please take as many pictures, right? So I'm not listening to Wayne D'Amelia. I'm just there, you know, posing for the pictures because I'm next to Tim Belknap and Albert Beckless. Yeah. So I'm going to send this to Yugoslavia, right? I'm going to be a hot shot. I'm on the right next to th these guys. But Wayne D'Amelia was calling me for a first uh, call, out. call out. And uh, he just couldn't pronounce my name, and I didn't hear anything remotely close to my name. And so finally, he screamed, like, competitor number two. And I said, oh, shit. I won the symmetry round in that uh, uh, show, and I, I placed third behind uh, Ron Lobb and Sonny Schmidt. So I qualified for Olympia. I mean, you know, when you go into... Not in a, my, my wildest... I didn't even consider this is possible. I was just there to have fun. And now, you know, after the prejudging, somebody's telling me, oh, yeah, you, you might be top three. I said, come on. And then when I did win, I mean, third place, uh, next day, photo shoots, all the magazines, and uh, now it's like, oh, you know, I was on the cover of everything, you know, I, I guess, uh, young. Handsome, yeah. <laughs> Semi-handsome, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, th this is, uh, and uh, in reality, I think I was like 215 pounds. I looked like a man's physique. You know what? I, <laughs> I started reading the books in 91 consistently. I mean, I picked up magazines when I was 12, but I started seeing you in the books then. <laughs> and then uh, I just remember you being on a lot of covers, Muscle Mag especially. Um, you know, we shared time even with the Weeder contract. Yeah. So, you know, did you win money for this? For the for for magazine? No? no, third. Or oh, yeah, there was uh, uh, $3,000. So you must have been ecstatic. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, you're used to making 40 bucks yeah. a day, three grand. Like, you know, that's like hitting the lottery. You know, that's the yeah, thing is, like, we talk is. about, like, you mentioned the Olympia, like, what do I win five grand? But yeah. I, for some reason, like, I know I was over the moon when I won my first pro show in 2000 was a night of champions, and it was yeah. like 15 grand, and like, I was able to use that money to purchase a home. Yeah. And for me, like, I used to think that, I mean, remember, that was over 20 years ago, and it's still kind of the same money, so it doesn't seem like as much now. Yeah. But back then, I mean, 3000 went a long way, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. so you're, and then, of course, standing on Olympia stage was, remember, I mean, we didn't have social media, so you couldn't be really famous on social media. So, like, the accolades made, meant that much. So not only you you wanted to be able to have bragging rights back home. <laughs> like that seemed like a big thing for you, but you were learning now to compete. You had a great physique. I mean, we talk about you were more slender, right? You yeah. probably had a crazy midsection, yeah. but the structure was there, but the size, yeah, I mean, size I think you battled size through a lot of your yeah. career. Yeah. I want to get a little bit into that, but. Yeah. But tell me honestly now, you know, be a straight shooter. When you were seeing my pictures back in the night, is what did you say? Uh, I, no, I said this guy, guy's right? got great abs, but he's just <laughs> way smaller than everyone else. <laughs> great abs, but way smaller. What's his name? I uh, remember someone uh, said, um, "My queen." He said, 
he's an ironing board with abs. That's my queen that said. I was going to say. And I never exactly. forget that. Yeah. Because yeah. I was like 18 and I was impressionable. <laughs> so I'm like, I would, I didn't think like, what an asshole. I just thought like, yeah. well, oh, I guess he's an ironing board with abs. You know, <laughs> so that means you that must have pissed you, you off. You lost to an iron board. Three no, times. no, no. Because this, <laughs> this, this, <laughs> this is way. This is he put on a lot of. Yeah, that was my queen. My queen. Were you pissed I love. when he said that? I mean, no, because. Uh, it's true. It was true. I mean, uh, uh, but dude, I was disqualified for the Olympia. Olympia. And and listen, Mike Quinn was he good? That, that no, I, every mean, time I competed with him, I beat him. Right? And <laughs> I, I know that, that he hated it. But uh, listen, when somebody you say I can take a criticism, I mean, I had no shoulders, no arms, no back, really, no calves. But that initially. was his persona, though, right? He was tra like yeah. in that statement, wasn't he trashing everyone? Possibly, but you know, this is how it is. Okay. Um, when somebody beats somebody or, or you get to that hype and you are being placed high and, and I'm competitive and I just don't think you're better than me and, you know, they, they just can't handle yeah. this, right? I would always be uh, happy for everybody. If you beat me, I shake hands. But uh, put it this way, Ray McNeil, for example, he was in San Diego. I beat him in some shows and he comes to me. He's he always, always going to punch me. You know, you don't deserve to beat me. You know, what the hell? I say, Ray, I'm not the judge. He was a Marine guy, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I beat him pretty much every time except once. But then, uh, uh, Night of the Champions, uh, Pavel Yablonitsky and uh, Nasser Asambadi. So, uh, Nasser was speaking German. So, they came to me and Nasser was going to translate. Pavel was pissed off that I beat him and I don't deserve to beat him. So Nasser came to translate to me. It's like, Pavel, I was not the judge. I'm sorry. I have heard that name in a long time. He I've crazy never likes. seen uh, Pablo Jabonicki smile. Yeah. Had he ever, ever smiled? I did. I mean, I, I'm that way, you know, that I always try the conversation. I, I try to make people happy and yeah. smile. I mean, Sonny Schmidt was a uh, you know, man of few words and I would just dig, 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 dig until he, he smiles. I mean, I, you say I'm uh, ecstatic to see you smile and being really outgoing now. But when I met you back in the days, you were never smiling. You were really on stage. I did. Because you had Jay, to Pavel. Jay, you, you can you can pull you can pull the video. 2006. Jay is finally uh, winning Mr. Olympia for the first time. He beat the goddamn know, Ronnie. No, no. It was a, you don't got to understand. I felt bad for Ronnie because there's a, there's a, like a backstory. We were kind of talking, and he's like, "You beat me," and I'm like, "Shit, man, what am I gonna do? Like, how am I gonna enjoy this victory when Ronnie's like he's pacing? You know, like how about the cartwheel? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how about, how about the, I mean, sure, I was probably jump off the stage. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, so um, you know, we go back, and now like you're rolling, right? So I mean, you go to the Olympia in '91. That's Haney's last one. Yes. And it was in Walt Disney, right? Yeah, it was in yeah. Orlando. Orlando. Was it actually in Walt Disney World in Epcot, or no? There was uh, there was uh, some other hotel. Oh, okay. I, I thought it, a, I thought I it was it... in Walt Disney. Like, actually, took place in there. No, yeah, but uh, you were not there. I, and I tell you a little bit uh, because uh, I remember this so well. And this is historic because this is Haney's last last right? one. And if you remember, a year before 1990 was drug tested contest. Yeah. And it was a questionable victory. You know, Lee Labrada could have maybe taken him. You I don't think should have won. I could have, yeah, okay. yeah. So now uh, Sean Ray was very vocal, speaking, you know, all this stuff. So we went to the press conference, and Sean was just like Mike Tyson when he said he's going to eat uh, Lennox Lewis' children and this and that, right? I'm going to do this. So Sean was, I'll take your house, I'll take your car, I'll take you this, you know, to Lee Haney. And Lee Haney, the biggest gentleman that was ever on the yeah. stage, right? And then uh, everybody else, Lee Labrada was also, you know, so confident. Dorian Yates, one night of champions, you know, first Olympia. First Olympia, yeah. So I was backstage, and uh, um, uh, Lee just signed a muscular development contract. And uh, you know how we their show, they were saying that's a bad move, you're not going to win, you know, because now, you know. What politics. Politics, right? yeah. And uh, it was up until uh, 15 minutes before the stage, actually. And back then, 12 o'clock noon meant 12 o'clock noon you're going to step on the stage. It was always yeah. ready. Fifteen minutes later, they call you know fifteen minutes, and he's still talking, right? And everybody's kind of peeking. He had some, um, uh, you know, suit like that. So finally, he excused himself, came to the first mirror, and took the jacket off. Didn't pump, didn't put oil, nothing. And I swear to God, like everybody just like froze. It was like, oh my God. 
little brother sit on a, on a bench. Dorian just had that face. I mean, Sean Ray is like, oh, shit. It's kind of uh, reminded me, like when we had that photo shoot uh, 2003 in my gym, when Ronnie, uh, yeah, I was standing right next to you, and <laughs> Ronnie came. <laughs> tell that story. Yeah. I, mean, I know we're jumping around a little bit, but you brought it up. So yeah, tell yeah. the damn story. Here's uh, another one we're going to. That's, that's <laughs> a good one because, uh, let's face it, it's 2001, Jay beat Ronnie. I mean, I said this to Ronnie. Yeah. I said this openly. Not happy you know, about that, by yeah, the way. Yeah, this this was really yeah. Uh, I think I, I I told the story. Ronnie would always come to me and ask me for my honest opinion because I would always tell them, tell him. And then he came after the 2001. He was doing photo shoots in Flex magazine, and I said, okay, uh, you know, Ronnie, you want to know? He said, yeah, yeah. Tell me. I said, Jay beats you. I don't know, hey, you know. And then uh, next day, you know, he came in and said, yeah. I seen some pictures. I see what you're saying. He didn't beat me. He did. He still didn't beat me. But I see what you're saying. I say, come on, Ronnie. He beats you, right? So that was it. But now, 2002, um, Ronnie didn't look too good, right? Sat out, yeah. Yeah, and you sat out, yeah. uh, which I think was the biggest mistake. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> you you did 2001 we'll Olympic. Talk about this. Off. <laughs> yeah, 2002, yeah, yeah. Uh, on a classic. Jay didn't show up. 2002 uh, at Olympia, Ronnie looked uh, very beatable. Gunter beat him. And I think that Gunther is the luckiest guy on, on planet Earth. He was good that year, and then he got the million dollar contract, right? Yeah, and then yeah. he uh, and then he um, beat him at the show of strength like it's two a, weeks after yeah, that. Yeah, after that one. Olympia, yeah. 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 So I was with Ronnie at the uh, Amsterdam show after the Olympia one week before the uh, GNC. GNC. So he was improved at the Amsterdam show. Yeah, he put some uh, fullness back in. So I, I was actually with Sean on, uh, on the phone when they were announcing the winners and they announced uh, uh, Gunther as, as a winner. I remember screams and all that stuff. But uh, bottom line is Gunther won that show. And then 2003, they're doing Flex Magazine photo shoot preview for the Olympia. Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler, and Gunther, right? So Gunther, you know how it had that smile. Smile. He never, I mean, that was, I love that about him. He was constantly smiling. You were not. <laughs> you were always <laughs> serious, right? Confident, very, very confident, you know, which is good. Uh, there is a thin line between confidence and arrogance. Confidence I love, arrogance I hate, right? Yeah, but hell yeah. I mean, I just won the Arnold in yeah. 02, yeah. sat out the Olympia, came back in 03, was the Iron, at the Ironman, unbelievable. 2003 looked crazy. And then, you know, won the Arnold, yeah. and then I won San Francisco Pro. So here we are, like, th that was the beginning of the season. Now we're rolling into Olympia. I'm like, fuck, this is mine, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, Ronnie brought the sand out. I don't know if you remember this. So yeah. Ronnie had the sand out in your gym, and you owned... Well, at the time, it was Coliseum, Coliseum right? Yeah, yeah. So that was the Flex photo shoot headquarters, right? Yeah. So we all flew out there every you know contest we did. So we all show up. Yeah. You remember what I was driving then? Or I always had different cars. Yeah, I, was saying, yeah, yeah, I don't pay attention yeah, to this, yeah. but, but probably a uh, white Jaguar. Yeah, that's what I had. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. He goes, I don't pay attention. Yeah. No, I don't yeah. pay attention. <laughs> you know why I remember this? Because my daughter took a picture with him. You know, he yeah, had a yeah. dog. How old was she then? Uh, I, had scrappy, five. I had Scrappy with me, the little yeah. white. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Scrappy, yeah, yeah. five years old. Yeah. She drew your pictures, you remember? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but so we were in the gym, all uh, of us show yeah. up there. We were in the gym, and uh, I was there. So first, I see him in Ironman 2003 looking like a freak. This is probably up to that moment because of the lights and everything, your fullness, you were ripped, striations, like you had the fibers everywhere. That's a clean in the biceps, by the way. Uh, did you? Yeah. But, uh, oh, but, yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I used probably more acid clean than it was ever produced. Yeah. I had like three, th four amps or something. So, yeah, say, how many yeah. people even know what yeah. acid clean yeah. is? But <laughs> listen, I mean, uh, uh, acid clean, you could see the fibers as you stretch the yeah, biceps, yeah. right? Yeah. With all this Sintel and all this bullshit, no, it, it just deforms you completely. But... <laughs> You were shocking at that show. I mean, bottom line, shocking. I, I get the goosebumps. I was there next to Chris Acedo. Hey, pull that up. 2003 Ironman, oh, Jay Cutler. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I was preparing a Flex uh, Wheeler for that show, you know. Yeah, yeah I remember. You, you know, that story. But uh, anyway, so for, for that. Uh, yeah, that one, yeah. Yeah, look at that. Papered, full as a house, ripped, uh, striated, separated. I mean, it, it was shocking. Yeah, no diuretics okay. for that show either, bro. No? No. Ah, That's ah. the 09 Olympia, but... Uh, yeah. I was say, yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, so you were standing next to Melvin Anthony and uh, 
Flex Wheeler is supposed to be aesthetic guys, right? Yeah. And with your size and width, you're creating more aesthetic V taper X frame. Yeah. And size was not even comparable and conditioning was not even comparable. You know, so with the momentum from these shows, back to the photo shoot, he is coming and he is confident. Jay, I mean, uh, uh, Gunther is confident. So I'm there very right close to you. You were, you were doing some biceps uh, uh, pumps. And here comes Ronnie, you know, comes from the, uh, through, through the door. I, I said this really, it was eclipse. It's like fucking <laughs> Jim got the dark. And you know how he walked and then, then like a gorilla. I mean, there was just like a fucking, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and Jay was like, <laughs> A fucking monster. You know, <laughs> and it, you know what? I was so fucking mad because because this was this was June. Yeah. End of June or, or early July. And I just guest posed with him and Gunter in May yeah. at Mannion's yeah. show. And then, you know, we go to Steve Weinberger's like yeah. June whatever, fifth. So within like this must have been July when we did the shoot. In that short amount of time, yeah. he must have put on thirty fucking pounds. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and he's going to tell you, I mean, that was most muscular guy I've seen in my life at that point. Still. I mean, leg, I mean, he was, uh, Chris Dean was there and he took a picture. Chris Dean was an uh, Olympia competitor, yeah. right? He qualified for 2000. Uh, he looked like one of the Ronnie's legs. I mean, it was, it was crazy. I still uh, think to this day. I still, yeah. as big as some of these guys are, yeah. it's not the same. Yeah, it's not the same. But uh, there's so many pictures, and I have those pictures. <laughs> and, I mean, he raised the smart. The life came out of you that day. I mean, like, <laughs> whatever spark you have in your eyes Wasn't that his was biggest gone. year? And, and Gunther's smile was yeah. gone, too. Yeah. Well, Gunther had the fat pockets because he signed, like, that three-year contract, yeah, yeah, you said, yeah. you know. So yeah. he was, like, sitting pretty, you know. And, and uh, yeah. you know, Ronnie was on a mission, yeah. right? And, yeah. uh you know, dude, your gym was like, I just remember I used to come out there and I, I still stayed. I didn't stay next door because there was like a residence in, yeah. but I would go stay still in Costa Mesa. Just but say, yeah. I really looked forward to coming out there every year yeah. because Chris Lund really pumped us up a lot with the things. And you'd run around with the camera. And back then, <laughs> like, they'd get mad because you'd release the pictures <laughs> on message boards. You know, this is pre-social media. Yeah. But you'd be showing up with the camera. Yeah. And, of course, you know, he had that cra – I don't know what that big light was. Like, they kept upstairs, but it made yeah. you look, like, yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. That, that was Chris That was, like, an, that was yeah. early's ring light, yeah, like, yeah. looks, right? You see, uh, all the photographers wanted to find out how uh, Chris Lund does those uh, pictures and because it, it makes you dramatic. Look, you can look so-and-so here, and then as you come in, where he set it up is, like uh, – uh, 20 days, uh, 20 uh, weeks of dieting and, uh, you know, 10,000 units of <laughs> insulin and growth. I mean, you just blow up differently. But yeah, uh, that was the time. So, as uh, you mentioned, Weider organization was pissed off at me that I'm putting the pictures of Weider athlete in phenomenal shape on a social, you know, th there was uh, getbig.com. Yeah, yeah. It's not like I was making any money or anything. I'm a fan of the sport. No, but you were making like how did you get that deal so that they set up photo shoot in your gym because it used to be at Metrics. Do you remember what yeah. year they brought it over to your gym? Uh, I think it was like uh, yeah, 2002. Yeah, from and 2002 to 2007. Like, so did they? Did you ask them to do it, or did they say, "Hey, oh, you no, have the, a location"? The, the Chris Land came and see the gym, and then he says, "I want to shoot here," and then. Uh, Flex uh, contacted me. Yeah, I, I did get paid for, uh, uh, you know, Flex Magazine photo shoots. But uh, that's Flex Magazine photo shoots they're being paid for, and they get the, the space, priority. They could do anything in my gym, right? But me as a fan, I mean, I, I wasn't making money of putting any pictures on a Get Big or anything. I mean, I remember taking those pictures of you. Yeah, probably one of the best pictures I've ever seen. I mean, he looked like a freak. And then there was... Uh, uh, place in the gym in the middle you know right under the the the, wi the wind uh, the window uh, that it took all these pictures that you look sensational and uh, i almost l lost the weather contract because of it how did you how did the the gym come about like when did you buy the gym like how uh, did that whole it was process? gold's gym right yeah 99 i just remember it was coliseum first was a powerhouse uh, okay. when i when i got it it was a powerhouse and then i i changed it to the golds you know i got the um 
that deal, but then I, after I realized I'm, I'm paying too much money and I'm not really getting anything For in license. return, I said, like, why wouldn't I just, uh, you know, make my own? So I switched it to Colosseum. Did you actually put equipment in it or was it already, was already there? Yeah, it was already there. I, I got a few more Did pieces. Did flex equipment give you pieces for the gym? Uh, you, know, you had some uh, leverage pieces uh, in there. I, I did. I did uh, uh, buy some flex equipment. I actually am meeting with yeah. Mark. Mark, Mark now and yeah. ever in dinner here. In Good. Days Say hello. Yeah. Vegas, yeah. I saw Mark in, uh, in Boyer Cove like a couple of yeah. years ago. Yeah. I know you live down that area, but so um, so you got the gym around that time. Ninety nine. And Sean Ray was the most famous guy training there, right? Yeah, that was Jim. His his uh, place to go before I even uh, you know got it. Yeah, so th that was. Oh, his, he was training there he already. He was training there already. Yeah. And yeah. and you gave him that front parking spot. I was always, <laughs> Never. I was always jealous of that. He didn't get that. He didn't get well, that. Well, you that always the, is that the gym that he went to in, in the battle for the Olympia? Yeah, and he the, parked it. He always parked his cars up in the front. It wasn't always. even a parking spot. He just yeah. stopped it so right why, there. So why? How was he allowed to park his? He cars wasn't. There? I mean, uh, uh, some people wanted to call. Uh, you know, to be towed Get away. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, but that never happened, yeah. You think he had yeah. the greatest car collection in bodybuilding? Or he was always driving different cars, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, really, uh, yeah. Sean got pissed <laughs> off at me like that Lamborghini or whatever he has in the uh, video of uh, Fit and Lincoln. Famous. No, yeah. Fit and Famous, right? Uh, he's, uh, he says, this Lamborghini, that was not his. And uh, really, it's not no, his. No, he showed me the check for it. Yeah, it's everybody. <laughs> yeah, no way. But uh, so we, anybody that knows the story, he was not. So when I said this publicly once, I guess, uh, when I came back from 2011 until 2017, I was out of the United States. So finally, I came to 2017, and I saw him at the uh, Lou Ferrino show, and you would expect he's going to come say hello, and I think he's looking away all like pissed off, and I didn't understand it. And then uh, uh, Hidetari Amagishi told me, oh, yeah, he is mad because you talk something about his car. And I said, yeah, it was not his car. What do you mean? What, what he's mad about? <laughs> so, yeah, publicly, again, it was not your car. <laughs> yeah, he, no, he, I saw the check, though. So he actually had that vehicle. How much is for? How uh, much is for? A hundred and something thousand. No way. Yeah. <laughs> no, no way. Oh, boy. <laughs> I could be wrong with this. No way. Another beef's going to start. No, no. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just defending like, what, he, what he sent me because I think I brought it up in the, one of the podcasts, actually. Um, so to go back to the gym, uh, yeah. you know, it was gold. You switched it over to Coliseum. You put all the images up. Yeah. Where would you get that idea? I mean, I, I liked it. I, you did this photo shoot over in Italy, right? At one point, and you dressed up with uh, Alex yeah, Ardente. Yeah, and yeah, that was that was perfect. That was '99 uh, Olympia. Uh, so, Nasser, somebody, Kevin, Ronnie, myself, uh, you know, a couple of other guys, we were dressed like uh, as uh, Roman warriors, like, and and went to Colosseum. Now, one of my favorite places to visit, yeah. by the way, is yeah. amazing. You you get the chills when you come even yeah, yeah. close and you go inside. So uh, the thing was, there was uh, Bob Gardner also, uh, a photographer, and for, one more for Weeder. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I, I said to Alex Rodenti, let them go and attract the attention. All the security is going to go there. <laughs> and let's go on the second floor. And uh, you know, as soon as we went there, of course, they were not allowed to shoot. I took everything off, put my, my uh, outfit and I have a pictures inside the Colosseum, which is illegal to have. But I had those prices pictures. You're a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could have been uh, arrested. But, uh, hey, I, you know, I had it. This is one once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I've seen uh, Franco Colombo pictures back in the day, you know, in front. But nobody... You know what I'm just thinking of now? When we were in Egypt, Regan jumped up and took his shirt off on the pyramids. And we started taking pictures. And the police came yeah. over and took the camera... Yeah, 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 and yeah. took it back and deleted it, mm -hmm. yeah. but they didn't realize that we got a bunch of <laughs> cell phones, so we yeah. still had it. But yeah, they were yeah. like, it was serious. So I was in one, uh, I think it was Fry's. They had a, from a styrofoam statues of the Romans, and I really wanted to do that. I mean, there was like, uh, you know, gladiators fighting and all that stuff. So that's what I wanted to do originally, but uh, it was impossible, so I just uh, put the murals. And how long did you have that gym for? Ten years, from ninety nine until two thousand ten. Eleven years, yeah. And during this time, I mean, you had stopped competing at a certain point and became yeah. more of so called the mind. Which I want to ask you how you ever got the name the mind. I think it was an article you had a column in Flex or something yeah. called the mind, right? Yeah. First, uh, uh, I know you you were 
doing a movie, and I, I want to talk a little bit about all that that's stuff, it right? Also. Uh, yeah, that's good. 99, uh, it was, I entered every show that was uh, organized. In How many total year. shows have you done in your 72. career? 72. 70, Pro shows. Pro shows, 72. Is that the most? Um, no, uh, Dexter, obviously. Oh. <laughs> but uh, at the time, yeah, I, I was leader. And then, How many uh, Dexter do? I do we know. Many. I think 96. Oh, that many, huh? Yeah, oh, yeah. He passed me in 2016, I remember, in Australia. But, uh, uh, yeah, I did uh, uh, every show, 99, with you. Uh, we did the Iron Man Arnold Classic. Yeah. Then I did the yeah. Canada Night of Champions. Went to European Tour. Uh but that's when I got the gym, and obviously, my career went to to shit because uh, once you have enough stress, yeah, stress, obligation, you're there, and it, it just wasn't the same anymore, you know, because uh, these guys from the from the gym that was selling me a gym, I guess they offered month before I came in to all the existing members, you can get the three years for three hundred dollars, so everybody, you know, got that. So when I came in, I, I, I had all these members that are not going to be paying anything for three years. So I was kind of set up to fail so they can, you know, get it back from me. But, you know, I, I uh, managed it to survive. I, but all that stress, I, I was, you know, your mind is not in it. And, uh, you know, I started declining. When I finally wanted to make a comeback in 2006, that story of you and me in uh, Romania, I mean, uh, I was sharing with the... With the Kida and, uh, and Dennis Wolf and uh, Sylvia Samuel. And, and I got in shape, you know, when you train with them. And it was two times a day. I wasn't even paying attention too much to my diet. But I always eat like you, healthy. So what is it? Just a little bit more carbs, a little bit the uh, same amount of protein. And no cardio. And I was getting in shape. Uh, that story they said many times, but I, I have to brag about it because that's the moment. Uh, Jay beat Ronnie at Olympia, right? So finally happened, and we, w we went to Austria. In Austria, I had like five guys competing. So I, I wouldn't dare even think I can maybe pull. That was our first stop. First stop, yeah, Austria, Vienna, yeah. And and you won there. And Dennis Jens was there, Marcus Ruhl, was, uh, Marcus Ruhl, yeah. Ruhl. Many guys were there. So I, I chose not to compete there, but then I was in Romania, there was very few people going, you know, Ronnie and Jay. He did, and then there was a Russian guy, Adi Abu, a uh, few more. So it's like, you know, I'm like in, uh, in great shape. Let me take a diuretic and see what I look like. And, uh, you know, with the uh, Aldactone and, and uh, a Bumix at the time. Yeah. Uh, and not just that, uh, we loaded. If you remember, there was a banquet afterwards. Yeah. I had uh, like eight apple uh, strudels with the <laughs> vanilla sauce. Yeah, so I said, like, oh, I blew it. Doesn't matter. But I was so full. Ripping full and then dry. So it's like, oh shit. Okay, let me just shave. I'm going to compete. Because they, they, they were going to have me as an MC. You know, so I tell them, okay. But I'm still IBB pro card holder. And Arnold Schwarzenegger back in 1980, remember, he went as a CBS commentator at Olympia. But instead of competing, he pulled a, uh, a competitive number. And uh, Mike Manzer, Boerko, Frank Zander yeah, yeah. went berserk. So I saw myself, that, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I can't beat uh, Jay or Ronnie, but I honestly th thought I could, uh, I could place third with the condition I was in because I, I was very happy with it. So I managed to shave the legs and, and front, and I really uh, needed just somebody to, uh, to shave my back. Ironically, my today's wife, Betty, uh, was Hiritada's best friend. I was traveling with him. So I was kind of going to ask her, you know, it would be embarrassing, but... Who are you going to ask to shave your back? So that was the plan. And I really, I was just about there and phone rings and there was Jay. I said, bro, can you do me a favor? So of course, anything. So what do you need? I mean, uh, <laughs> a pro ten. But uh, Jay brought a sponge like this, right? <laughs> and he has... I brought the brush. <laughs> it was the brush. <laughs> no, yeah, I brought this sponge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sponge. And it was like, okay, okay. You know? <laughs> so, and... Uh, I was in my Colosseum shirt and uh, in the posing trunks uh, with the legs as white as this. I mean, I, I was, you know, just like <laughs> super white. I didn't even put the collar or anything. And he, he never asked anything, right? But as I was putting the collar, finally he they came with the Betty for me to check on him as well. And I finished uh, and I just, Betty took a picture of me and, and Jay. 
Uh, I mean, uh, you could see there, I was ripped and dry. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and I was, uh, you know, quite a good size. I, I think easily I could have placed third. I could not contest you too, but... Uh, well, just because I had just won, it was kind of like no. You, you were much right? better. You were much better. But you know that was the strangest setup. Like it was the first European tour that I yeah. ever went on. I think after the Olympia, I went to Russia to compete, but uh, in two thousand three. Yeah. But in 06, like it was like really strange, like setup. I yeah. remember like it was that barely a mean. stage, and like <laughs> I don't even know how it was going to take place. But you were advertised as the MC, so that's why I felt yeah. like I'm like, oh, I can call Milos and yeah. he can do the to tan for me. Yeah. So I never thought anything of it. And then, of course, we're showing, and later you told me, and it made yeah. me, like, I still feel bad to no, this day. No, I mean, uh, it's, it's, uh, I love the story. I love the story because, really, I mean, who's going to have opportunity to put the collar on a reigning Mr. Olympia? Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I mean, look, uh, you know, I always consider you a friend, and you're dear to me. You were always nice to my daughter. You were, you're a gentleman. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, the, the person that you are. So by all means, that was just like my idea. Maybe I can pull it off. You know, everything is life in life happens for a reason. Yeah. So I said, like, okay, I'm going to just prepare for my 2007 Iron Man because uh, Iron Man lights are the best uh, lights for me. So I'm just going to do that. But then I got uh, suspended from IBBA. I could never do it. You know, so that was a bummer. Wow. So the the mind, how did oh, you yeah, get mind. that nickname? I, I read it first. I uh, I didn't expect nothing, so I get the magazine. I knew the mind. Peter McGough and an uh, editorial of uh, Muscle Fitness and Flax, they decide to call me this because every time I do the interview, it was different. It's not usual, and uh, you know, I had uh, different ideas of training, different idea of uh, very scientific. Places. Yeah, you know, uh, my father was um, a psychiatrist, and uh, he always told me, uh, "Don't live in a box and don't be." forced to accept even the science read the science accept what you see useful and if you see something that doesn't make sense explore maybe you can uh, you can make it better so just that whole supplement science i mean uh, he is the first one to to tell me like don't you realize that uh, there's only one opportunity during uh, a day you know, to have all this blood going to your muscle, which is when you train. Did you think, like, what you can accomplish with the sending all this? Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, at that time, nobody was doing this. And I'm hearing now from uh, my father, who is the most educated, intelligent guy, right? But when you're a teenager, you kind of uh, rebellion. For some reason, I don't know, we never wanted to listen to our parents, right? Of course. I don't know why is that. So... But he made so much sense, right? Uh, there is a blood going to the muscle, muscle contraction, open up the cell, you can push everything in. So I said, like, okay, this makes sense. Let me try something. So I went to the uh, Serbian pharmacies, and there was uh, essential amino acids, tablets, made for uh, renal patients, right? And socialistic medicine, it was free if you have a prescription. So I steal prescription book from my father. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I criminal, <laughs> <laughs> and I learn necesse est, and then how to write in Latin, you yeah. know, my prescription. And I go to ten different uh, pharmacies, and I get my ten boxes of uh, EAAs. And I went to the supermarket, and I get the dextrose, right? And I was drug free. I came to uh, Miss Universe eighty seven drug free, you know. And uh, that was another thing when I was competing with the guys like Chuck Sano, some other guys. And uh, I speak no English. <laughs> so they say, <coughs> what are you taking? Uh, 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 EAA, you know, protein, multivitamins. And, and they say, fuck you. You know, so I said, fuck you. It's a bad thing. I don't understand. They were pissed off that I'm not telling them what steroids I'm but taking. But you really couldn't. I didn't even. Oh, they, they, they were expecting steroids. They were saying, yeah, they were asking what I'm taking okay. in the sense of... Uh, Serious, and I, I tell them EAA is, you know, it's, it's kind of yeah, yeah. insult, right? But uh, I had no idea about steroids, you know, at the time, because there was a picture in that same magazine that I told you that I've seen Arnold that pose, right? It was crazy when he was super full, and underneath is no steroids. And I would, I would fight anybody that would, you know, say that Arnold was a steroids. I didn't believe it. <coughs> so when I came 87. You know, uh, they asked me, they were insulted by my answer. And then I competed a couple of more shows, um, 87, 88, and uh, I was losing to everyone. And then I, I realized, 
if I want to pursue my bodybuilding and do what uh, big boys do, I have to do that, right? So that, that's how it was. But uh, um, about the supplementation, EAAs and glucose, I apply by my uh, father's idea. That's the hyperemia advantage. You increase blood flow to the muscle, you deliver this and insert it. So that's like one of the things uh, Flex Magazine uh, wrote the article, um, uh, Magic uh, Workout Drink, which I was drinking, right? And uh, they, they called me the mind and then called uh, Sean Ray the mouth. <laughs> yeah, where, did, where, did you, where, did the, where did you get the insulin coming insulin. from? Because you're known as the guy that yeah. has a lot of you know, insulin knowledge so, and protocols. Mm -hmm. In Eastern Europe, uh, DDR, Eastern Germany, uh, Romania, uh, Bulgaria, Russia, I got uh, uh, some information about steroids, how they, they com combine androgenics, anabolics, GH, and then there was insulin many times. And I didn't understand why insulin. So I started researching and said, oh, it's an anabolic hormone. It stores everything. We can use this to our benefits. But I didn't know how to use it. There was no explanation back then. You know, so, but what, I, what, what, around what time was this? That was 92. Okay. So and way then back. Uh, 92, yes. Uh, uh, and then on my first contest, uh, 91, uh, San Jose, Tim Belknap was diabetic. Yeah. And I remember he, he was taking uh, insulin backstage and then eating, you know, danishes and uh, all this, you know, sugary stuff. And man, once he started popping up, did he uh, beat you that show? Or? No, I beat him. Oh, okay, I, I did beat him. Yeah, but I mean, I beat him on symmetry on the, on the lines. He was right? pretty. He, much, he was bulky. That he guy, was yeah. bulky, and uh, you know, either way, if they gave it to him. But I've seen like, oh my god, this is crazy. So I was putting two and two together. So let me try the insulin. At the time, there was not that fast acting insulin. There was humulin N R U. You know, so specifics, right? So humulin R was the fastest acting. Mm -hmm. And that has a onset in 45 minutes, peak in two hours, and then out in eight hours. So it was kind of hard to control. But I said, this is what we have. So then I would time it, okay, to peak while I'm training. So I would take it like two hours before, and then you have to eat. But what to eat? You know, so <coughs> I didn't know how many units, how many grams of carbs. So I was uh, experimenting with less than I supposed to, and then I would get the uh, hypoglycemia, and then I would have to eat more. And after a few tryouts, you know, I started uh, feeling okay. So I said, oh, I conquered this. To maintain uh, blood sugar level, you needed like so many grams of carbs per unit. And I determined back then that it was about 10. You could get away with less, but, uh, you know, risk. So I would just put 10 grams per unit. And uh, I published that article in uh, Muscle Media 2000. So this is where it all came from. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, you think that's where the protocol actually started from? Because I, I was always told, yeah, yeah. I know when I started to learn about yeah. insulin, like it was 10 grams of carbs per unit, per unit yeah, that's, right? That's, so that's if you took thing. 10 units, you needed at least 100 grams of carbohydrates. But yeah. the the uh, like the continuous was the question mark because everyone's metabolism is different, Definitely. so it comes back around, right? Yeah, so so it's like how long does it stay in your system? Yeah, right? because you can. But that can be depend on metabolism, correct? You could, yeah, and okay. like, like you said yourself, I mean, uh, if you can mention that even with the, all the carbs that you take, you would still go hypo, mm -hmm. and uh, you know you were taking well over ten grams per unit, right? Yeah, I mean, at certain times, you know, like yeah. t ten before, you know, twenty after, or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. I had a build up, of course. Thirty you know. after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, twenty thirty, yeah, <laughs> and then uh, you know another ten or whatever, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. And, and I see, uh, but I've heard uh, astronomical amounts, like, like up to a hundred units at a time. Some people, you know, yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. know how anyone could ever handle that. Uh, uh, you see, twenty units is already super physiological amount, more than your pancreas would make it. So if you have a more than you would normally ever make it, this is enough to yeah. create crazy. Uh, I was using twenty twenty. And uh, you could take 20 before you trained, yeah, 20 before and 20 with a lot of carbs, a lot of carbs, yeah. You see, uh, I was like you, didn't eat much fats, it would just be protein and I carbs. I didn't eat any fats, yeah. I wasn't even eating steak, you know, for dieting really? times, yeah. Wow, yeah. mostly you know, egg whites, uh, uh, white fish, white fish. Yeah. I didn't even eat a lot of chicken, I'd use protein powders a lot, you know. So basically, I had less than 20 grams of fat. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. It's a keto diet, you know. Yeah. 
But you had a close to a thousand grams of carbs, right? Yeah, a lot, yeah. very often. So mm -hmm. I think if I would have thrown some fats in there, I wouldn't have had to eat as many carbs and maybe I would have had a better, diff different effect. I mean, you might approach it different, but I kind of stuck with what worked, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean look, uh, 2001, you look like absolute freak. Uh, I really, I'm going to say it publicly, like I said many times, 2001, you won the Olympia. Uh, everybody knows, including Ronnie. <laughs> you know, but uh, you were on insulin, right? Yeah, I did take it um, on and off certain days. Mm -hmm. um, but I was also, on, I'm not going to lie, I was taking four meals where, of course, carbs like rice and, you know, some simples or whatever else. Uh, but I also had protein, uh, four meals out of the six, like protein powder. Protein powder, yes. Yeah. So can you get lean or does it work? Like, would you... In someone's protocol today, use protein powders. Yeah, it's only if you or trust. You if you trust, I mean, uh, chicken is chicken, turkey is turkey, fish is fish. Protein powder is what they tell you it is, right? So if if it if is, it's not, yeah, it's, it is what it is. Then yeah. good, but if if it's compromised and you you don't have a protein and amino acids they're expecting, but then you have a more carbs and some garbage, uh, you know, obviously you had a good quality one because it didn't reflect on your physique, but. Uh, you know, audience would probably, because uh, I, I love this story. 2001, you were on a lot of insulin. You were ripped to the bone, 285 before the, yeah. what, two weeks before the show. A week, a week, a week before yeah. the show. You know, because everybody was there, like, oh, you can't use insulin. It would blow your, your midsection. It would make you hold water. It's, you know. If you know how to control it, you, you even said you were getting leaner on it. I was getting leaner, but I'll be honest, like mm -hmm. I stopped. I stopped from after 2004. I never yeah. used it again from 05, 06, 07, 08, not, you know, till the end of my career. Uh, not to say that I didn't use metformin. Like I used that in the off right. season, but never really pre-contest. So, and I mean, metformin I used for the first time in 96 when I won the nationals, I was introduced to metformin, like just to make my, you know, yeah. make the carbs more, the muscle exactly. more sensitive, you know? Um, but I didn't know anything about it. I didn't, I just was kind of like, it was kind of introduced to me. Uh, but with, as far as insulin, you know, I feel that like it was harder to maintain conditioning for me um, using insulin as I, it always works great. Like the first time you really mm -hmm. use it. Right. And I think around that time was really the first time I used it mm -hmm. consistently. Right. Because I told you, I dieted down like from 16 weeks. I, I went on 50 grams of carbs a day, like three days. And then on the fourth day, I'd bump up to like five, 600 grams of carbs. And I got ripped fun. in five five weeks. And yeah. by 10 weeks out from the Olympian 01, I was already like shredded to the bone. So basically, Chris is like, listen, you're just going to have to eat. You know, and he cut my cardio. And that's when like on the high days, like for back and leg days, I took the insulin. So... And then eventually it was like high carbs every day that I trained. So I would train on a two on one off cycle. But on that two, two days, I was training body part. You know, I was doing four workouts because I was training twice, twice a day. day. That was the protocol. Like today, no one trains twice a day. Yeah, yeah. And I think we, we talked a little yeah. bit off camera about this, but I want to touch on that in a second. Yeah. But so I was kind of like, I, I don't believe a lot of cardiovascular is needed if you're Put, outputting because I feel that weight training does burn more calories than cardio. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. Okay. There's no question. So I, and I was training intense, my rest periods of 45 seconds, you know, I was eating my six meals a day. I mentioned, you know, what kind of those carbohydrates versus uh, protein were um, some simple sugars, you know, white rice. I was mostly, I would have honey. I would add honey just to, to get to a thousand grams of carbs is a lot, right? It's not the joke. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's why I think I use the protein powders because for me to eat, you know, eight ounces of chicken or whatever with that, and obviously we know if the carbs are that high, the protein yeah. doesn't have to be as much. And I yeah. think I was only like around 300 grams of protein anyway, like on a lot of days. I mean, if I was eating 50 grams of carbs, I eat 400 grams of protein, but yeah. I wasn't doing that at that point. So, so only four, 40, 400 grams of protein and 50 grams of carbs. So, <clears throat> and not a lot of fat, you know? Okay, so 400 grams of protein is 1,600 calories. 50 grams of fat is 200. That's 1,800 calories. You were less than 2,000 calories a day? Yeah, but I mean. For the love of God, that's less than your I mean, you saw, I mean, and I came to the Ironman and you beat me. Now you know why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank, yeah. God. thank God you did. <laughs> <laughs> thank Thanks, Chris. Yeah, so I was doing two hours of cardio a day. So you can imagine, I was training twice with weights yeah. too. So I was in the gym four times a day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you see. Uh, when I say about the, 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 the everything, 
We want uh, maximal results, not optimal, not minimal, nothing in between, right? You would want to, mm -hmm. you know. So I think you compromised a little bit. You overdid it. Yes. And you didn't have enough. And it uh, wasn't, uh, listen, Chris didn't agree with that. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm doing 50 grams because I was so embarrassed after 98 tying with you no 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 yeah so yeah so so i was so embarrassed because you know i had won everything up to this yeah. you know 96 you said we met but i won everything took 97 off and i said i'm gonna go full tilt into 98 because i knew my competition like you mentioned yeah. you saw me in 96 i couldn't mess with chris and yeah. you know all these guys kevin and all of them so nobody expected it. so i i went into the 98 um Night of Champions, and I'm like, I'm going to get called out with Kevin and, and Ronnie, Ronnie Coleman. Because Ronnie beat Kevin at that show. That was like the beginning of Ronnie's rise. Yeah. But, and I was so pissed. I got 11th, and I said, you know what, Chris? I'm going to do it my way. And he's yeah. like, okay, I'll guide you. He did not agree with 50 grams of carbs. I would have half a cup and a quarter cup of oatmeal. That was my 50 grams, basically, for the day. Jesus. So around the first workout, and... uh and then I would do that for three days, and then I'd bump up to crazy carbs on, you know, whatever day, the, the fourth day. And I did the two hours of cardio, and I was shredded. You were shredded. I mean, uh, that was crazy conditioning. I think one one time you even mentioned that you, you loved your conditioning, 99 uh, Ironman. And then I heard you also 2003 Ironman. What is the best ever? Which version of Jay Cutler uh, from any contest? Would you I think? think the O2 Arnold Classic. Oh, two Arnold Classic, really? I was 273 yeah. there, and I think that was the best combination. Of everything? I would say 2003 Iron Man. That, that, I remember. I it's the lights, though. It, the lights tell tell a different story. But yeah. we look at this. Do, show the first picture of the most muscular. Yeah, that's one. I mean, look at that, right? The fullness and. That's what, that's yeah, that's that was. I was 273 at this show. Oh, that's 2002 Arnold Classic. Yeah. Who did the beat? Is Chris Cormier? Was yeah, second? he got yeah. second. He I had the dread, for... dreads that year, you know, the yeah. um, cornrows. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, listen, Iron Man was great. Oh, one Olympia, I guess, was, like, astounding just because it was such a shocker for the first time. I mean, people say 99, uh, 09 Yeah. Uh, I, I said Olympia. this, uh, yeah. I don't know. You, we never talk about this, but uh, you got the phone call. For me, uh, I, I uh, left a message on your cell phone. Yeah, you did, yeah. One minute into the prejudging. Okay, so 2007, uh, he won, but I you know, I don't think you were at your best, 2007. 2000. Should I have won? Or? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I told you this. I yeah. wouldn't give it to you. Listen, listen. Okay. <laughs> J Mac, what an asshole, huh? Yeah, yeah, Comes on my yeah. podcast and tells me, <laughs> "Come on, you come here, you tell him you beat him three out of four times, yeah. you tell him you shouldn't have won." Now I got to get Victor Martinez on the podcast. All right, so yeah, so oh seven, I I shouldn't have won. I mean, listen, the, oh eight, the, the, I lose. Okay, to Dexter. Two thousand eight, he loses right to Dexter. So kind of you don't expect it, right? That now he's going to make a comeback because usually when Miss Olympia loses, he never comes it's back. Done, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, done. It's done. And uh, like I said, and I'm a fan of aesthetics, right? So you would think I would be inclined towards uh, Dexter Jackson, yeah. right? One minute if to pay judging. They, they didn't even do like complete quarter turns. Like, okay, I called Jake Cutler, so congratulations, you win. I mean, it was for me, it was like shocking. The difference was like, it was not comparable. You were so dominant. Uh, that's why you see, you, you beat the great Ronnie Coleman in 2006. So maybe... My also expectations and everybody else is that 2007 you have to repeat, you know, this and now you would be even more more dominating as Ronnie Coleman 2007 wasn't really competitive, right? And I, I think you were just slightly off and, uh, and you know, you, when you're off, you should have been penalized, right? So kind of. You, you, you were with yeah, me in I 07. stayed with him that year. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got that year, I remember, I just got off tour mm -hmm. and I got home Sunday night. I landed from Utah at 10 and he called me. And he's like, what are you doing this week? And it was my only week I, I had off the whole year. And he's like, can you fly out here tomorrow? Because Dave couldn't come out. Carrie had to work. And he's like, I'm not going to be able I can't drive. And can you help me? And then I was like, all right. So I booked a flight. And the next morning, I flew to Vegas uh, for 07. Yeah, so, and I had the infection. No one, like, can we talk about this? So I had a Winstrel, um, yeah. like, get infected. And Silvio Samuel, this is, I think you were, I yeah. don't know if he was in your place then. But, so he came out, and we had this DMSO. Uh -huh. And I was sitting, I remember exactly, I was sitting in the in my um, bathroom and he came and he put this DMSO 
thing and he was rubbing. What, what was he rubbing? He in? massaged something in it. But it, I already had a tan on. Uh-huh. I already yeah. had done my like one coat of tan. Yeah. This was days out. And next thing you know, like, cause it was swollen. I had a bump, you know, and I'm like, oh shit, I don't want this to show. Sure. Yeah. And of course that DMSO and putting that tan and it just infected the thing even it, worse. It, it looked like the, the, yeah. the knot went away, but yeah. it leaked into his bloodstream. Cause obviously yeah. if it's a knot, the white blood cells are holding yeah. it in yeah. and it leaked like, it into his bloodstream. So it was all smooth, yeah. you know, and I, it, I could barely do the <laughs> bicep. So I like, I was like, uh, shit, should I pull out of the show or, that but explains. I mean, look, uh, uh you pull it off and you won. Maybe it's not dominant and uh, assholes like me or somebody else could say maybe you deserve it, you didn't deserve it, right? Mm-hmm. But you still won. And I, you know, there was, you know how it is nowadays when you criticize somebody, like uh, especially these uh, new guys, they got so offended. I say, yeah. it's my opinion, right? And I said it. And look, sometimes differences are so close. And I favor conditioning here was way better. Like if you beat me in Iron Man, your condition was better than mine. So you I would have no said, problem. Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, so I would accept it. But, uh, you know, judges are going for whatever. You know, in 07, honestly, I, I thought he was going to die. Oh, Seriously. Man. No, it was, it was that bad. He couldn't, when he would talk, yeah. his jaw was shaking. And yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. When we he talked, told me that story. Yeah, yeah, and he would just. Oh, my God. And I was yeah. like, dude, this isn't good. Like, something's shutting down. But the, that uh, DMS, so the methyl sulfoxide, right? It's transdermal agent brings everything. So God knows what is in this cream that you it put in it <laughs> inside your body. Like, oh my God. I didn't know that you were infected. But <laughs> didn't you I remember the that the night show, there was a room. Didn't you get an IV? No, no. I mean I went on I was supposed to go to Australia f- for Tony Doherty to tour. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was like, I can't come. You know, I got a bad infection and I remember I started antibiotics. I mean Carrie was, you know, she's a nurse practitioner, so it's like it was an issue, but we you did en- go, I ended up though, going. I ended up going. Yep. I re- actually, I remember you saying you're like, I'm dumping blood because I got to fly 16 yeah, hours. Yeah, and it was just, it was a mess, you know. And that was the worst. That was the worst year, even worse than losing for me. Which at which point of time did you realize you can win Olympia? Um, when I went which on the European tour with Coleman in 2000, um, and finished second to him, and Chris Aceto said that you're going to beat 2000. Him. Uh, then it was after, was there, right? It was after, yeah, it was after that he might have got third, I think, in yeah, a couple yeah, of the shows. So, so yeah. it was after I placed eighth, you know, s- coincidentally, o- only myself and Ronnie of the big caliber names yeah. went, you know, like and on the top James, 10. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think Dennis was top 10 then, was he? No. 2000, yeah, he was. Yeah, I don't think so. 10, yeah. Maybe yeah. if he was, it was yeah. close to 10th, yeah. right? So it was like uh, we were the f- top two in the top 10 to yeah. pl- go on the tour. For some reason, Kevin didn't go and none of the guys went. So, Nice, I was able to collect some checks, but I got to stand next to Ronnie for the first time that I had been talking about for years. And next thing you know, I mean, I thought, you know, Chris is like, I'm telling you, you're going to beat him. You're going to beat him. Chris was my biggest cheerleader, and I was, like, somewhat believable. And I died, like, I dropped some weight, and I came in really solid for the last show in in England for Kerry K show. And then, of course, he's like, tell me all year in 2001, you're going to beat this guy this year, I'm telling you. And then when I showed up, you know what happened? Wow! Uh, Don, uh, did you mention Dennis James as well? That 2000 um, Olympia. I mentioned back in the day there was also at 12 o'clock noon. 12 o'clock noon. You know you're gonna be on the stage. 2000 Olympia was first time that they changed it. So uh, I know going into the Olympia, Dennis was I was working with him, and so he was asking me, "Okay, man, is this anything else? Anything else you think you can do to make even you know bigger difference?" So I told him, like, well, yeah, um, you can shoot 45 minutes before the, the stage insulin and uh, pump up and look fucking ridiculous. But if a show is not on time, it can backfire. <laughs> so he said, you competed, you know, so many. Di- was it never late? I said, you're right. It was never late. Oh, I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> so now, you know, we go there. That's the day. That's the time that uh, Triple H was there. So Triple H come at 12 o'clock noon and fucking talks for like half an hour. And then first time at Olympia, instead of everybody going on the stage like uh, uh, it used to be, one by one, <laughs> you know, start going. So if you look, I mean, uh, Dennis looked crazy at 12 noon, right? And uh, everybody was taking pictures of him and he did the, the black and white photos backstage looking crazy, crazy, crazy. And he was so confident, I mean, you know, Dennis's shoulders, chest, you know, it was just, oh, my God. 
But then, uh, you know, he sit down, let the blood go in, and uh, like 45 minutes, an hour later, you know, he pulled water, like it switched, and he didn't place very well. So I think that in Europe he looked much better, but uh, he, I think he placed Yeah, I remember, like, you know, he was, like, yeah. one of the most incredible transformation guys. Yeah. I mean, I talk about him, yeah. Gustavo Bedell, I mean, even Hidetada. I met yeah. Hidetada in 2004 in, in Japan. Yeah. And he was nothing then, you know what I mean? So I've watched all these guys that you helped. And, I mean, what's the secret to your, like... It was just uh, my style of training with the insulin. I mean, really, there's, uh, as you know, the, the drugs, steroids, it's about the same. I mean, some people take more. I usually reduce. My, my cycles w would be mild, you know, comparing to some of the guys. But I would drive everything inside the muscle during a workout and then post-workout replenish everything and uh, it always worked i mean dennis james put over 40 pounds in the first four weeks you know gustavo 30 something dennis wolf uh, marcus rula did I, these uh, guys uh, just not know a lot about nutrition on top of that they knew but uh, really insulin was the difference back in the day but do you uh, think people were afraid to eat that also i mean uh, you touch the subject of you were training twice a day. I was training twice a day, you know, and now no, but it's overtraining and all this stuff. Does anyone train twice a day anymore? I don't think so. Uh, I, I, really <coughs> I think do. some guys do leg splits. Yeah, on the same day? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, uh, I would always, uh, you see, uh, you did the two days on, one off. I was actually doing six days uh, straight two workouts a day pretty much. Uh, but uh, to answer your diet question, uh, I think that a lot of people uh, under eat, you know, nowadays, under eat, under train, <laughs> you know. So uh, I, I'm talking about maximization, and you're a perfect example. I mean, you push your body to absolute limit. Uh, I do remember even seeing you sometimes in the guest posings, and you would show up at the guest posing just like a contest shape, you know. I don't know where well, I, I was competing twice a year, or probably yeah. those years too. But it, you know, yeah. I always had abs and leg cuts, yeah. so I mean, it looked a little better. I wasn't always in you know, the best, the best of shape, but, yeah. and I didn't compete as many times as you. I mean, you mentioned yeah. you did. You didn't need to. No. Know, for, for me, it was uh, <laughs> every, every. Uh, what do you regret with your career, whether it's competitive or. Yeah. Um, the biggest regret is for me using a synthol in my arms. You know, that's. Tell uh, me why you did that. Okay. Up until uh, 97, I mean, I was told many times, oh, Milos, with the bigger arms, you would have a chance, right? And we were using Essiclin, uh back in the day, but then you know it's it was you not available get it anymore, anymore, right? Yeah. And then uh, uh, Kerry Case came '97 Olympics. Remember, Flex was supposed to beat uh, uh, Dorian Yates, mm -hmm. and then he pulled out of the show two weeks out. And uh, Kerry was looking for him and didn't find him, so he said, "Milos, can you please give this to Flex because he had to go back to England." And so there was like 12 bottles of something. I said, what is it? And he says, Sintol, and uh, you inject this in the small body parts. And I said, oh, wow, you know, can I check? Can you get me some? I said, just take half. So, you know, of course, I started. And then uh, initially I was getting great results with that one. I don't want to say great results because I, I never want to encourage anybody to do it. I really hate, I think it's uh, it's the biggest, biggest mistake you made. Biggest yeah. mistake, yeah. So, but, uh, you know, uh, I got my arms to 22 and a half inches, like, oh, <laughs> you know, shit, you know, so I was swole, but it changed the shape, anatomy, and uh, then uh, I ran out of that one, so somebody else gave me from South uh, uh, Africa, and uh, that probably had some silicone in it, and then it, it just really, it was super hard to push anyway, and then I realized, like, there was, like, it's fibrotic tissue, necrotic, mm -hmm. and then you touched my arms, and it was like, oh, my God, it's dead to a door. So when you sell your soul to the devil, you get a uh, result, and then devil comes and claims it. So the bigger arms that I had for a year. You yeah, know, they looked just, ridiculous at one yeah, of the shows yeah. I saw. Like, they would just look swollen, you know? Like a bricks. I yeah. mean, it's embarrassing. I, I'm, you know. But it ruined your kind of ruined your career. So that's why when in 06, when you were going to come back and compete, mm -hmm. now you already had damaged the arms at this point. So you were a little concerned about that. Yeah, it, it would be visible. But uh, by 2006, 
kind of uh, you know I, I could pull that off you know specifically posing if I if I put the forearm close to the biceps you know not uh, away uh, to 99 and uh, the night of the champions it looked ridiculous I don't think anyone really uses it at the top level do you, nowadays right? uh, you know every time when I coach somebody I, I tell them you have to give me your previous diet previous cycle yeah. what you're doing right now and many still like to use it i'm shocked i mean yeah. i don't i you know because people ask me about it and i'm like dude no one uses that like ronnie and i like yeah, we yeah. never met like that wasn't needed right i mean if you had like i was always like i wanted to have the strike yeah. like this yeah, you know i have a split still in my biceps you yeah. know obviously this one torn a little bit but yeah. like that was the whole thing is like i wanted to have arms like robbie robinson and yeah, yeah. You know, the bicep peaks. Ronnie Coleman, too. I mean, he had a, a yeah. crazy bicep. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so it never made sense to me. And, you know, I know there was pump and pose and all these yeah. other things, but. It was so kind of they would give you that story binds to the fiber. Yeah, I mean, it's not pharmaceutical. You know, it's, uh, you know, something made in a lab. And uh, this Chris Clark from Germany, I mean, he contacted me back in that day and gave me all these stories. You know, how you. You know, uh, tell me what I want to hear. Oh, it's going to make it bigger? Oh, yeah, it's good. Okay, let me use it without really analyzing and dissecting it. And Tell me so the most impressive bodybuilder you've ever seen, like you, a memory of, like, who was impressive. I mean, you talked about Munzer earlier Munzer. off camera. Like, was he unbelievably shredded? He was person? really, he was ridiculously shredded. He was, like, this year around uh, super dry and then... Uh, Cross thread. Is that genetics? You think a lot? It could be. I mean, really, I have that uh, Turkish guy. Uh, oh yeah, Hamdula yeah. He was always he was glute. He was the glute guy, glute right? Glute guy, and then strided lats. But not uh, huge. Not huge. Uh, symmetric. He would. He would. You know, be okay for classic physique nowadays. Uh, but Munzer was uh, as far as uh, how shredded. Um, Ronnie, I mean. Uh, at, at one of the uh, interviews, I said that your 2009 uh, could be considered, uh, uh, you in 2009 would beat uh, Ronnie at his best. And I said that publicly, right? But then uh, a lot of people, oh, I've sent me the pictures, okay. I said, okay. And then I've seen some of the pictures of Ronnie. I said, like, okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe you forget, I, you forget, you know. Yeah, yeah. So when, yeah. you, you know, because listen, Ronnie like this yeah. from behind was like, it was just so perfect, right? The yeah. tie-ins and. You yeah. know, we forget that Ronnie like had a super small waist, and yeah. and uh, you know, what do you think causes distension with the bodybuilders? Uh, with the uh, with the distended stomachs, yeah, distended stomachs. Well, GH extensive GH could. Uh, I, you know, but you know, listen, you I'll be honest. Yeah. I mean, I used I used everything there was, yeah. um, but I never had it. Yeah, I mean, ninety nine, I had it a little bit, but do you think like? You think the lack of, like, I think my theory is, like, I train twice a day. A lot of the guys train twice, and I feel a lot of those guys had flat stomachs. Like, they trained more. I think guys nowadays, they don't train as much. They just don't, and they just eat, 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 you know? Is it overeating? Is it Overeating could I don't, be. I, I disagree with you that it's the GH, GH and the drugs. I mean, GH causes the growth of organs, you know, so. Uh, yeah, but how much do you have to take, Milos? I mean, look, even uh, Flex Wheeler being in the, in the Germany, that one time he had to pull it off and they, they uh, put him in the hospital and they said, like, oh, you, you understand your liver, your kidneys, uh, your heart, she everything had is enlarged. large story, yeah. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, it, it is growth hormone. It, it does cause that, but. Uh, uh, certain guys don't have any at all. Is it genetics? A like ton of growth. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you're a perfect example. And, and you know, I, I wish uh, I could say that uh, I have the answer. You know, they accuse me of ruining the sport because I brought the insulin, and insulin uh, makes this uh, kind of guy. I used insulin since uh, 93 until 2003, and I didn't have a distended, right? So, like you say, you don't agree that the uh, GH would do it. Yeah, I don't and, think uh, it's insulin uh, either. Yeah, I either, think it's, either. I think, you know, it's... It, it's a combination of genetics, of genetics um, and overeating. Much, overeating, yeah. It's quite possible, yeah. People not training their yeah. midsections, right? Yeah. I feel like, like, I'll be honest, like, when I watched Battle of the Olympias and Up and Coming, I mean, that Mike Quinn might have called your, you know, you an ironing boy with abs, but I always watched how you trained your abs, yeah. you know, and what yeah. I noticed, you did a lot of hanging leg raises, yeah. right? Because I feel that, like, that... Stretches? And yes, the, yeah. the stretching, it's going to keep that flat. Yeah. Right, if you think about the pose, right? You, I try yeah. to mimic the poses with the training, yeah. right? Yeah. 
So I would like actually hang off a bench when I did my crunches and yeah. hook my my ank- my uh, heels to the a bench, yeah. and I would you know do crunches that way. So it actually expanded. It pulled yeah. my yeah. So that's what, what I always say to to Regan and everybody: you stretch yes. and make that the gap it just contract, between, right? Yeah. yeah, and then it, that keeps your stomach flat and uh, it makes it deeper. And I, I mean, you know that that was your pose against uh, uh, Ronnie, right? So you have to always capitalize, even standing relax, your abs were always super deep. Yeah, but uh, one thing, one thing I wanted to bring up, just because you and I, you know, we've gotten to know you over the last couple months, and you were involved with Victor Conte oh, yeah. with the Balco Labs and the Project World's Fastest Man and all that. And yeah. I had no idea until you brought it up. Who was the world's fastest man at that point? And uh, it was Maurice Green. And he raced Kevin Levron. No, no, that that was uh, oh. uh, Chamberlain. Yeah. Okay, right, yeah, Chamberlain. I, I was at the, at that uh, race. I, I had actually videotaped. So Victor Conte contacted me back in, uh, I think it was ninety seven. If people don't know, Victor Conte yeah, Victor was Conte the guy is, with Balco Labs with Marion Jones and, yeah. and Bill he, Romanowski. He had a snack and, systems. Uh, he's a, a mineral expert. He is inventor of ZMA, zinc, magnesium. But but which is a great product, product by yeah, the way. Yeah, it's very good. So it's a mineral anabolic formula and all this stuff. And uh, I don't know if you got it at the time, but uh, I got, uh, uh, there was not email, there was a uh, mail, like, oh, yeah, he's Victor Conti, he's doing this uh, research and studies with all the uh, elite athletes, swimmers, track and field, football, you know, right, and bodybuilders, to do a uh, blood test and uh, estimate uh, magnesium and zinc level because he believes that everybody is deficient. So I even answered to him, like, uh, I am sure I'm not deficient, right? And uh, I was, uh, wasn't was deficient, and that attracted his attention. Like, so what do you do? And then we start talking, and he realized that, uh, you know, I, I, I do a lot of research. And then uh, we struck the friendship, but then we start talking about uh, enhancements, right? Because he works with many athletes. So at the time, you could use GH specifically and pass any test. You can use insulin and pass any test, EPO, and pass any test. So uh, he wanted to apply this to some of the athletes, and everything that I told him worked, so he's like, oh, my God, you know, uh, if you continue like this, we can uh, break the world record. So, of course, records are to be broken. So, so are you interested? I say, yeah, let's break the hardest record. So what would be a hardest or fastest man alive? So even at that time, I told him, Let's pick the, the, the person that has uh, no chance. <laughs> of His last uh, name was Montgomery. Uh, that was Tim Montgomery. Yeah. Montgomery. I mean, yeah. don't pick uh, somebody that is already, uh, you know, close. Let's, you know, t- in order to see that this would work, pick somebody that uh, is it's under the, the way down. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. so uh, to make long story short, in nine months we broke the record from nine uh, seventy eight to nine seventy seven. Uh, of course, look, when you re- uh, look at the Olympic sports, you would always want to believe that everybody is drug-free, everything is, no you know, I was like this, uh, I wouldn't want to believe it. Uh, so for Project World Record, there was Tim Montgomery, there was Trevor Graham, who was coach of uh, Marion Jones and uh, mm-hmm. Tim Montgomery, and there was Charlie Francis, expert in the sprint, that did uh, Ben Johnson at the time, he is mm-hmm. really phenomenal. So he told us so many stories of how many Flo Joe, uh, 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 Carl Lewis, uh, you know, uh, testing positive. Failed. He, but he failed the several drug tests. Yeah. The U.S. doctor showed the... the yes, the okay, documents. so not to talk, <laughs> touch the subject too much, <laughs> but here's like everybody's cheating. So I say, I know we can create undetectable steroids. I mean, the, the, the way it worked then and probably even now, so I hope Vada is not watching. Back then, if you have a uh, oxandrolone or oxymetolone or stenazole, it doesn't matter what, they know metabolite they can expect in the blood. But if you take, at the time, norbelotone of that tetrahydrogesterone, clear. clear, that we called it clear, yeah. it, it's something that was never made anywhere, so there is no metabolite. They can't find it. So we tested with so many athletes. And they went to UCLA lab, and uh, everybody was passing. So if if 50 people are passing Olympic lab test, that means you are, you are safe. So that's how, you know, we, there was like 17 Olympic medalists that uh, took it. And, and some famous, famous baseball player, boxer, you know, 
not to name the names, with the Balco scandal, right? That uh, uh, basically undetectable stuff could not be detected unless Trevor Graham sent a sample to uh, UCLA, and then now they, they have a metabolite, and now they retested everything, and everybody failed. So the, this is how it goes. I mean, I, I'm so sure there was a whistleblower for the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, yeah. You know how it always goes. <laughs> I know the guy that runs Wada now. I think he was an IRS agent. He was the one that was digging through all that stuff too. I'm forgetting his name right now. Uh, but yeah, the the, the, the thing is, uh, there is always way around it, right? I mean, even to this day, somebody was asking me, you know, to help them. I say, I don't want to be <laughs> the last thing that they need. Uh, I remember on guy. ESPN they had this thing called nine nine seven, I think nine seven nine or nine seven one, and it was the eighty eight Seoul Olympics, mm. and it's when Ben Johnson tested positive. Yeah. And every person in that race within three or four years had tested positive in a different different way, every single person, including Carl Lewis. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. not like we're making something yeah. up. I mean, they, yeah, the, it's, US, it's the, the doping agency showed the documents yes. that he tested yeah. positive That's what for. Charlie Francis told us, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I didn't know if you knew he was, uh, yeah. I, I knew he, I didn't know he knew. I Victor. knew he, I knew about it, you know, and, uh, yeah, I remember the whole thing. You know, I remember when it all went down, and of course, it was baseball. all on national news. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, tell me about the the Levron race with the guy. How close did he get to it? <laughs> so uh, Kevin seemed to do everything, man. Like he Kevin was a, is superhuman. Yeah, I mean, he is uh, super powerful, as you know. Did I you mean, think he had a shot? Or? No, 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 no. I mean, this is you know one well, of the fastest guys in the world. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's ridiculous to challenge anybody. In, okay, if you and I right now go to the UFC uh, octagon with somebody, yeah. I mean, it's going to take a microsecond for, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Unless I can run, you know. But uh, yeah, not at that level, and, and he just smoked him, you know. Kevin would be good for probably average. You and me uh, would probably how lose did to him. Get, how did they get set up? Did, how did the guy agree to it? Victor Conti, you know, because uh, uh, Kevin... It's specific. He, he can talk, you know, he, his story and, uh, oh, yeah, he he did uh, whatever on 60-meter dash, you know, so he would throw some number that was, oh, comparable. Okay, maybe he has a chance. And because we were working with uh, this guy also, uh, Dwight Chamberlain, you know, so he showed up, you know, they had a photo shoot in my gym doing uh, some bench presses and uh, squats and stuff like that, and then we went to the field, and uh, a guy just, <laughs> I mean, smoked him. There, there was, like, twice the difference on the 60 meters. Like, yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing the race. So what's, like, one of your, fa like, we, we haven't really touched on Dorian much. What, what's, like, one of your favorite Dorian stories? Because you competed against him. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, I trained with Dorian. First, when he came... 91, really, at uh, that night of the champions, he was phenomenal. And he was also... That was his pro debut, wasn't it? No, he, he well, did... Ben Aziza won the show. 90, uh, yeah, 90, night of the champions, Ben Aziza won, and he was second. And Ben Aziza beat him on the back, you know, and that, that's something that uh, is unthinkable because uh, uh, Dorian's back is probably... It's the greatest of all time, right? I, I would think so, yeah. Yeah, we we talk about Ronnie Coleman, but there are some pictures when you when you right. I, I remember yeah. seeing you know yeah. Dorian's back for the first time, and it just like the thickness in the lower lats. Yeah, and like it seemed like it came like that much off. Like there was a Christmas tree, and like it was just like two shells, you know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I went <laughs> when you read all this uh, heavy duty one set warm up and one all out. I mean, I don't know how many people actually believed it. I didn't. I didn't. I can't imagine that this is how you I train. I heard it wasn't how he trained now. Well, you know. He so did a lot of volume, actually, but he would work up to that one set, but he would take a lot of set. The weights that you and I would yeah. push to get there was his volume. Yeah, so this is what I was expecting. So uh, he offered you know, to train with me. There was this, this first when time was, was this? 95. I was in, uh, after the Olympia, 95, I was in, uh, in a gold gym Venice training and doing legs. And then... Uh, Dorian came with uh, Leroy, his training partner, and oh, me was, you know, too bad you're training legs. You know, you know, I would train legs with you. I said, well, when are you gonna train legs next day? I said, <laughs> I'm in. You know, because how can you pass? But it's okay. Uh, you know, I'll follow your routine, and uh, he warms up. You know, and and uh, does uh, warms up two sets. There was not one, and it goes one set all out, and it was nothing. 
So I said, okay, well, can you please at least try, uh, you know, one of my favorites? And my favorite was Icarian. It looks like, uh, what do you call it, the uh, hack squat, but it's vertical. That they had at the Venice Gold. It's a hinge. It's on a hinge. You step on it, and yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's uh, crazy, crazy. And he he did that, and of course I do this all the time. So I was way stronger than him on that one. He didn't kind of like it because uh, you know he, he he couldn't do it perfect. Dorian was very strong and doing everything in perfect form. You have yeah. to give it to him. But uh, after this workout, we trained in the Coliseum gym a few times and in Birmingham a few times, right? And he was always super low volume. So, uh, I mean, I was kind of like he was skeptic and didn't believe that that's how he trains. For me, it's impossible to go one set warm up and then all out. Uh, I was terrified I'm going to tear something. Because, okay, uh, I could squat six and a half plates for six reps. What is the first warm up and one plate, two plates, three plates, and then go to six and a half? It just didn't make sense. You know, so, but, but that's how he trained. I mean, uh, and he would say, uh, like, why, you know, keep hitting the nail if you can nail it in, in one hit? I say, no, but uh, in a one hit, you can go too far and, uh, and break more than the muscle, right? You can uh, and look at his injuries. Now when he speaks, he says he wish he did more. Do you, how do you feel about machines versus uh, free weights? Like, I, like, you're training Regan Grimes, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Do you tend to do as... As much free weights now, or do you focus we do on mix. machines? I mean, uh, let, let's put it this way: like, uh, where are the where are the guys squatting six and a half plates on the squat anymore? Nobody. A I know, but this is you just said. Like, I'm training him, but w why isn't he doing this? Okay, he has a little bit knee problems. Okay, so, you know, then when uh, when you have to no one, but I'm saying no one squats. So I'm not just yeah. trying to pinpoint yeah. him, but yeah. like, dude, I built on like squats. the squat yeah, front the squats, basics. right? Yeah. He but likes front squats. I don't know if you watch some of the videos. I made him do front squats uh, several times. Yeah, I, I You do it on a Smith machine or do you? No, free weight, but then he the said. The Smith machine was always better for me, to yeah. be honest. So he, he told me that he prefers, and I let him do it. For me, it's just, okay, stimulate the muscle. If you close your eyes and you stimulate, and you don't know if it's machine or if it's Smith Mind machine. Mind-to-muscle connection, yeah. Yeah, and, and you do it, I'm happy if I can reach that failure, control, muscle contraction. Yeah, but to answer this, Am I strictly uh, old-fashioned guy, uh, heavy-duty compound exercise, free weights? No, because machines and some machines are great. Make to isolate that primary mover. I said this in a Flex magazine. There was a, a questionnaire: if you fail on the six repetitions on the bench press or a, a chest press machine, which uh, of those two exercises would uh, uh, exhaust your chest muscle more? So I said machine. Why? Because machine Isolation, is already yeah. made to isolate, you know, to use the stabilizing and neutralizing muscle, secondary muscle groups. So 99 for a road to Olympia, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, my segment, I said, like, to prove that point, I, I train exclusively on the machines. <laughs> yeah. So you can. I mean, uh, for me, it's just stimulation, the feeling that I have in the muscle. And as I talk to uh, Regan when I train him, I really want him to be his worst enemy, not his best friend. What does it mean? When uh, he puts the load on a muscle, I want him to slow it down and contract it. So make exercise as hard as you can, mm -hmm. not as easy as you can. If you do slow eccentric and just explode on concentric, as Dorian was saying just recently, like, okay, any pressing movement, he says, imagine the spring and then lower it, you know, slowly and, and then explode. explode. Yeah. But when you explode, how can you really focus on uh, on, uh, on a muscle? Uh, I was saying slow concentrics are one of the best stimulating exercises. Many experts disagree. Uh, uh, John Meadows disagree with me, and I'm very good friends with John Meadows. By the way, today I got the John Meadows uh, Award sword from uh, Fuad Abiyad. Thank you very much. Uh, but when he came and uh, trained with me, I said, like, okay, John, let me uh, show you super slow hack squats. Eccentric, uh, eccentric, concentric, super slow, uh, Smith machine, any uh, shoulder presses, incline presses. When you purposely go uh, stop yourself and uh, squeeze for eight yeah. seconds, oh. uh, slow preacher curls. I mean, uh, slow concentrics. It's a nightmare. 
Yeah, I, I listen, I because I'm I'm sitting here listening to you, and I'm like, I'm disagreeing that I still think a person needs free weights, like to develop a. <laughs> but you, what you sure. say makes yes. makes a lot of mm-hmm. sense. Um, we talk about that all the time. Where yeah. Do you just don't see the grainy physique? I don't, and, I, and you know, like I don't know. Dense. The diet protocols are different. Like people have cheat days now. Mm-hmm. Like I never cheated on my diet. Like even Chris Aceto does cheat days for the guys. I don't. We never did. Like it was either more carbs. Or it was just yeah. rotation of whatever. Yeah. Um, but you're not allowed like a cheat meal. Like no, there was 16 weeks of like hell. Right. Yeah. We never cheated. Even when you thought, I, oh, I look unbelievable. That was like okay, just keep pushing harder. Right. I never cheated. Ask uh, Reagan when he had a cheat meal. Last was probably in uh, in uh, Reno. <laughs> you know, yeah, I don't give him. Why would I give you stupid calories that can inflame you? I give you nutrition. I give you more calories. But uh, on this, uh, I love to disagree. So, would free weights be a, a base and a fundamental thing? Yes, absolutely. But if there were not free weights back in the forties and fifties and sixties, there was just machines. You don't think they would? Uh, develop same kind of physiques. I mean, uh, anything you can do with free weights, you can replicate in a, in a machine. Yeah, I just think, you know, I think the core has a lot to do with it. So when you're yeah. focused on using dumbbells or even a barbell and there's that balance yes. thing, I think just internally you can get, I don't know if you, it just, to me, it seems like, and this is just my opinion, like yeah, we can yeah. argue about it all day, but I just think like the ruggedness of the physiques have not, they don't have that same... But Chris, listen, yeah. Phil Heath was unbelievable. He was mostly machines, machines right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, some guys never squat. I mean, Paul Dillette yeah. never squatted, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his <laughs> legs were never unbelievable. Hard, eh? I know. Well, Period. I mean, I used to get pissed because I see yeah. him do 40, 40 pound dumbbells yeah. and his arms were 23 inches. But yeah. it's the same thing like Chris Cormier. I was so mad before that Iron Man. Yeah. I flew into Venice, you know, and he beat us. Yeah. And they were like, oh, yeah, Chris was eating a Subway sandwich and yesterday. Yeah. And Always. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> here yeah. I am cooking fish at Marina Pacific Hotel, yeah. Yeah. and Cormier's eating a turkey sandwich at, yeah. at, you know, it's just, it's so it's so frustrating because it, all the science that we talk about, yeah. like, you're the mind. But you yeah. know what? It don't matter sometimes, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's some, Dexter Jackson asked him, oh, he never dieted. He just he ate, ate McDonald's, but he did have to change yeah. up later. In First his time he yeah. dieted and ate, ate uh, uh, pre-packed meal was last Olympia, but he looked the worse. I mean, really, the first time he was on a bodybuilding diet, he didn't look like a bodybuilder, you know, that we know. So, yeah, some people can get away. And uh, and I, I'm glad that you say you never cheated. I don't cheat. Uh, I had uh, maybe two cheat meals a year, you know, when you really feel like, oh, I crave this, so uh, let it happen. But what would be a purpose of giving a uh, Regan or Samson or somebody else, okay, uh, have it? For Samson, actually, I gave him, uh, you know, I, I depleted him and then I gave him because it works for him. Right? For Regan, I would much rather save uh, carbs for the, the, the high carb day and just load it in the muscle that I want to load it. Yeah. So the Arnold's coming up here next yeah. week, yes. and you got two people in the show, yeah. and you know some of the other people. Give us kind of your is uh, Logan competing also? No, Logan okay, is okay. Uh, just uh, focusing on o- Olympia. Yeah, give uh, us your assessment of the guys you know that are doing the show and, yeah. and the two guys you're working with. So uh, Brandon Curry is the biggest favorite to win. Obviously, he should win it, right? Yeah, he, I mean, uh, yeah, if uh, he shows up in the condition, it's going to be very hard to beat. He's a uh, former Mr. Olympia, former uh, Arnold Classic champion. He push uh, yeah, big last year. so yeah it's very very he's ecstatic he's take everything only thing that he doesn't have a balance upper body lower body and uh, if you're nitpicking uh, if you're really judging it's okay balance sh- supposed to be a major factor sometimes he pulls the, those quads to look decent but uh, many times he relaxes them and uh, you know so some people could challenge him William Boniak uh, also former champion, second at Olympia, was fading in the last couple of years, right? So uh, I think that he's going to put it together. Uh, he is thickly muscled, striated, you know, every bodybuilder is bodybuilder, but he's narrow, so people with better structure and uh, width can overwhelm him in some poses, you know, so this is how I see it. Uh, Steve Kuklo. Uh, Steve Kuklo is monster, absolute, uh, what, 285 or something, right? Uh you know, uh, he would possibly, standing next to you, right, uh, they say, okay, well, 
you know, Jay Cutlerish kind of physique, but he couldn't touch you because you had all this quality. You have a more pronounced Not as much taper. detail, right? Yeah, right. lacks the detail, uh, shallow abs. Uh, not really separated and strided. He could get hard, but you know the the hardness without separation doesn't appear so good. So you have to be super dry and hard to look conditioned. He takes a lot of space, you know, so he can look big, competitive in every pose, side chest, side triceps, yeah, uh, big arms, uh, big legs, big calves. He could, he's going to be competitive, but. For me, I, I'm just, it's not the wow factor. This is a physique that, wow, we want to represent. He was second after prejudging last year, contesting for a title. Like you said before the show, you know, maybe uh, everybody's sleeping on him. He can show it up and, and mess uh, a lot of people up. He could. Uh, what about Cedric? Cedric is not competing, you know. Oh, he's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's not competing. I and, and I really think that, uh, you know, you could see from beautiful B taper and, and shapely uh, monster that he was now is becoming you know age is catching up. If you look at the book of physiology, uh, t twenty years old, thirty years, twenty years old, thirty years old, forty years old, fifty years old, physiology changes and it's visible for him. His waist got thicker, the legs got smaller. So I don't think that uh, Cedric could be competitive. I think this is why he pulled out. There's not official reason why he pulled out. I don't know. Yeah, so now... So you got two guys in the show. My guys, uh, what about the butcher, though? Let's talk yeah. about the butcher. Okay, the, the uh, Brad, Brad Wilkins, Wilkins. Yeah. tremendous. I mean, uh, he made the great improvements. Uh, I said before in some of the uh, shows that he kind of reminds me of my physique. I mean, uh, he has a... Uh, we have a similarity. So, of course, if I say that he is similar to me, I have to like him, right? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I do. You know, he has a very good uh, aesthetic upper body. Uh, everything is there. Yeah, uh, legs are still not that uh, sweeping quads and uh, crazy separation. He's going to be very competitive. I know that he's confident he can win and, and uh, give uh, people a run for the money, uh, but uh, so are my guys as well. And, and I think, as I said before, differences are very small. So if somebody comes peaked, super full, super dry, and then has a structure, oh, now we are becoming competitive. Justin Rodriguez, yeah, very good. Improved, crazy front double biceps, back double biceps, yeah. Uh, good structure, you know, and, and uh, everything. It's just when you compare to the super shapely aesthetic guys, you know, he's still not there. And when you compare to the real monsters, he's still not there. But he's getting in very good condition. He's going to be contender he was fourth last year so he's going to be a major contender to be in the top five. Oh yeah oh yeah and uh, when i said top five anybody can beat anybody now uh, samson uh the Uda that i train i uh, prepare him for five shows in all five shows he was in tremendous shape he contacted me after john meadows died and uh, john was preparing him and he says can you help me out because he was lost and I did, and, uh, and we did uh, very, you know, sometimes you take uh, risks and sometimes you play safe. With him, I said, you're going to play safe, and we're playing safe. And uh, all five shows, I, I think he could have won three out of five easily. Uh, he didn't, but he looked very competitive. He is bigger, uh, fuller, and more conditioned already two weeks out now than any other show. They say he has resemblance of, of Phil Heath and Sean Roden and Flex Wheeler. I mean, he has that aesthetic bodybuilder, uh, old school Serge Nubre, but bigger, right? Mm -hmm. He believes he can win, and uh, he is going to that show with that intention. He's someone that just nobody's talking about him at all. Yeah, it's which a, hopefully it's, it motivates. It's him. It's a dark horse. I mean, a couple of people see him: uh, Nick Trigilli <laughs> and uh, Nick. Second Who's that? Part. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> one of the <laughs> podcasts. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, Regan, I mean, uh, they, they would always say that I would be biased towards my uh, competitors. I was a big fan of uh, Regan's physique from, uh, you know, first time I saw him. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like you said, if he puts enough muscle, he's going to be very hard to beat. He is as, as aesthetic as you can be, uh, tall, wide, Round shoulders, crazy back, striations, top to bottom, uh, hamstring glutes, you know, ridiculous. You know, he needed a little bit uh, bigger legs, a little bit fuller chest, a little bit bigger, better peak on the, on the biceps. So can Regan beat them in size department? No. 
uh, aesthetically right away. I think he aesthetically wins as a just aesthetic uh, standpoint. Condition has to be uh, great to be competitive. I mean, he can be top three, he can be out of top five. You know, this is uh, very easy, you know, what judges decide to do. So I think we all want to see him uh, bigger on the stage and fuller and uh, in a condition. So that's the plan. You're going to see him on Friday. Uh, I'm, I'm curious what you're going to think. You know, I'm yeah. just thinking about after the Olympia when Regan and I were downstairs chatting. Yeah. And he's like, you know, who should I work with, blah, blah, blah. And I messaged Milos and I said, hey, yeah. I got someone that, that, that I think you uh, would like to work with. And he was just like, oh, I'm still here. Who? And I said, Regan. He's like, where are you at? I'll be there in yeah. 15 I mean, minutes. Uh, he came immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he is, uh, of course, type of physique. You, you want to you wanna see him excel. And I, I pay close attention to the details, right? And uh, I wish I had uh, more time. Unfortunately, in uh, Christmas time, we get the covid yeah, and he, he uh, laid because he was staying with me then. Still, yeah. he didn't. He was he just laid in bed for days. Yeah, and couldn't uh, get food down, nothing. And that that's uh, that affected the preparation. So he's not uh, maybe as improved in size department, but as of this morning, he's two sixty two point five. You he's know, big, he's he's yeah. going to be bigger than he was at the Olympia yeah. for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. And we just need to. And he has uh, that quality, right? So uh, as long as his chest is full, I mean, muscle that determines how he looks for him is not shoulders, it's not back, because it's always there, right? It's chest. You know how many people, they have that one critical muscle that has to be there, uh, and, and usually it's chest. So for him, yeah, his chest has to be full, stomach is super small, you know, deep abs, striated uh, glutes, striated back, hamstring, and then uh, separated quads. I told Regan five years ago when I started working with him, when you're 30, You'll be yeah. battling to win the Olympia, yeah. and I mean, and he's a year and a half off. That's that's kind of the project. Of course, you don't want to think three years from now. You want to think of, uh, of course, know, yeah, two weeks yeah. from now. And uh, this is a super competitive lineup. W what is going to happen? You know? But uh, being in that first call out and then maybe being moved around and being compared. You see, aesthetically, yeah, he should stand next to Brandon Curry. Of course, you know. So if uh, he's uh, Full and and dry, you know, can he beat him? I, I don't know, but he's going to give him run for the money. Well, we look forward to it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So, we appreciate you coming on, man. I know it's been a lengthy <laughs> one, but yeah. and, listen, a lot of people are going to want to try to find you. Where can they locate you? Yeah, uh, social media, Instagram is the best, right? I mean, uh, that's uh, the easiest way to find me. And uh, pretty much if you put uh, milos.shachev at anything, Gmail, Hotmail, iCloud, you know, I prefer iCloud.com, but, uh, you know, if and you try any of those. And you're still taking on clients, and you work with not just athletes, or? Uh, just uh, just uh, bodybuilders, yeah. Okay. I, I don't have a time now, especially with the recent success of my athletes. Yeah, I, you know, you, there's just so many hours in a day you can't yeah. you can do everyone, but uh, everybody's super serious that uh, really want to uh, excel. I like to work coming with back. The Masters Olympia is coming back, you know. Yeah, there's no Would way. you like to see on stage? I want to say, I want it. No, 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 no. No, you're three for four. I think Jay needs to keep oh, this yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what, though? But the two of you guys, you guys should, maybe this Friday we should have a pose down. Has you guys there, are both still hey, in shape. Hey, has there ever been a, he's going to, he's going to crank up the insulin. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Eddie, <laughs> has there ever been a successful comeback? You. No, no, no. I mean, look, uh, uh, the, the greatest comeback in the uh, history of bodybuilding would be female Juliet Bergman that 17 years after she competed and never came won the Olympia won. came back and won. That, what about Arnold's that's comeback? Uh, Arnold's comeback, yeah, after five years. I mean, yeah, he looked good, but uh, I don't think he deserved to win that one. It's just Arnold, you know, 1980. I mean, uh, his legs were considerably down and, uh, you know. There's uh, a couple. Uh, Jenny Worth came back. Yeah, I, 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 I prepared her. You yeah, did? Yeah, yeah, I did? She did because yeah. she's we feature on the channel. She yeah. took what? Probably... 15 years off, right? Yeah, but I'm saying yeah. I want to talk about, like, Male like body Mr. Olympia. Mr. Like, Olympia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who made the greatest comeback? Not, like, after a time off. Like, Phil Heath, could he come back and compete right now? You see, I thought that uh, 2005 when he was coming back that he's going to yeah. put it together, but then you could see. I, I think, really, uh, after age of 40, no matter what we think, uh, uh, you know, body is not the same. Okay. You know, uh, 
Yeah. It, it, whatever you can get away with. I mean, when you were a teenager and in early 20s, you know, everything early 30s, worked, yeah. everything worked. Uh, and injuries and, and the physiological changes. Uh, yeah. If it, I, if I, I honestly thought Phil was going to do the Arnold this year. I was waiting for that to come out. Because, I, I mean, look, his last time on stage, he was top three. I mean. Yeah, it was a gift also. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think there was a gift. It's a great bodybuilder. I mean, uh, let's one face best, it, one yeah, of the best, yeah. Sure. But, uh, you know, the, the stomach uh, is so distracting. How can you hide it? Any front poses? You Any know, pose, yeah. Yeah, you, you can. So there is front relax, front lat spread, front double biceps, uh, uh, most muscular, and ab shot. There's way too many poses that you can't get away with it. So, yeah, he would not be competitive. I think that uh, just like Ronnie came back 2007, even... Uh, <laughs> It was sad to see him, you know. It is a time to uh, go. 2007, uh, I was interviewed and I said this, that uh, Ronnie shouldn't have compete. I think that he tried it 2008 too, right? No. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. No. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's ever been anyone that's really successful. I'd love to see. I'm, I'm excited to see. Uh, but, um, you know, we appreciate you coming on. Man. Yes, thank you. Thank and you for the uh, opportunity. I mean, uh, you know, we get together all the time. Yeah, and uh, Jay, you you love not to come over for dinner. I hear your, uh, I hear your sushi with the torch. Yeah, yeah, yeah really, so. well, we watch fights and at Neil's house. The yeah. UFC, you don't watch UFC? Not you know? as much. You know. Not as much. Not every yeah. week. We know. go there, and we and for some reason, Betty can make the salmon perfect. And if we try to make it home the same way, it's, it's same terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah. They got he's got these flames and stuff, and it's it's like it's, well, but uh, he's getting into one, the culture, you know. Yeah, one one question that I have for you. As you asked me the same, who is the most impressive bodybuilder you've seen? Dorian Yates. Oh, yeah? Oh, you know what? No, I'm going to lie. Lee Priest. Are you serious? Lee Priest offseason when I was when I saw him for the first time was unbelievable. But Dorian Yates, I guess, posed in Hawaii with him, and I couldn't believe it. Yeah? And I saw him, you know, in 95 compete Yeah. Uh, at the Olympia, and I I never understood why he won till I actually watched the show and realized. Yeah. 95? Yeah, and then Narsa was third that year. Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. year. 95? I was in the front row, and uh, Dorian's condition was off the chart. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. But let's uh, now. This is very interesting. Do you think his quads and hamstring? I mean, uh, not calves are phenomenal. His quads, hamstring, no, his arms, abs, yeah. abs, uh, shoulders, biceps, triceps. Uh, are a top 10 in the world? No, no, I mean, no, but it's just, I think the combination of, like, I thought he deservingly won that. Yeah. I mean, so it's but looking at pictures is a lot different from being there in person, but he was very, yeah. like, the, the yeah. lats and... So I, I said this... Uh, Lee Priest is probably the most muscular, like, he was crazy Man. when I saw him for the first time when he was a kid. Yeah. He was, like, 21. I mean... Uh, I see him compete first time. I, I competed in the same Mr. Universe yeah. when he came uh, 17 years old. He guest posed with his mother as a, as a mixed pairs. But uh, just to conclude with Dorian, uh, Dorian has a weak body... I mean, relatively weak body parts. Yeah, yeah. But every mandatory pose, he looks great. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I have to give it to him. And I said, okay, I talk about... Uh, he doesn't have quads... Mm, but they look pretty good. Yeah. Doesn't have arms, but look pretty good. But really, when you analyze best arms of all time, he wouldn't be top 10. No, no, best no. shoulders, best chest, best uh, abs, many things. He had crazy back, crazy uh, calves, but crazy conditioning. And uh, I mean, he d he dominated in the hottest era. I mean, he was beating Flex and Sean and Kevin and uh, Nasser and all these guys. So See, you but do you, do you think when Ronnie came to his peak that Dorian would have beat him? I, I, don't I think, think that uh, Ronnie 98 would beat uh, any version of, uh, you know, uh, Dorian. 98, first uh, Olympia, when he was super shredded. Yeah, I wasn't there. Uh, yeah, that, uh, when I talked to uh, Ronnie on his podcast, he agreed that 98 is his best ever. See, I thought yeah. 01 Arnold was his best. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And he was Many under 250. Yeah. Many people say that, but uh, uh, he agrees. We all seem to hit like that one time. One time. You, you hit it many times. Yeah, but yeah. there was, you know, like we, I mean, it's hard to pinpoint it, but. So you say 2002 on a classic, okay? Because I have yeah, to, because yeah, yeah. I, I asked uh, Kevin Averone, he says 93, Night of Champions. He was small. That's his favorite. So you know, that, you know what's funny? I was actually at that iconic guest posing that Jay and Ronnie had yeah. when you jumped on, when he jumped on your uh, back. His back? Yeah. Oh, I was up there. In Pittsburgh. Yeah. I was, no, it was in uh, oh, New York. Francis, yeah, it was yeah. Steve's. It was in New York City. 
And I was up there. I was working in the music industry. And I had a meeting with Sylvia Roan at Universal. Mm -hmm. And you messaged me. You're like, I'm in New York. I'm like, oh, I'm in New York, too. Yeah, yeah. And I went over there. And you, you had a little spot on the outside. Mm -hmm. And you, then you went on guest pose. And you and Ronnie came out. And he had his sunglasses on and his big boots. Yeah. And then you jumped on his back. And it was. And I think Victor Martinez was in the crowd. Yeah. I think he came up. Yeah. I, I remember those things. And I remember seeing what these guys look like off season. Yeah. And they just look didn't look like real human beings. No, but I'm glad that I have a uh, Jay Cutler 2002 Honor Classic. 90, uh, okay, uh, I asked Flex Wheeler what was his best. What do you think? 93 uh, Arnold. That's what I would think, yeah, because I love that. He says 99 uh, British Grand Prix. That he says, like, even Ronnie, like, suggested that he could have beat him. You know, he couldn't beat him. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, no, yeah. 93 when he was, like, 218 he was or whatever the fuck he was. Peeled, yeah. yeah just yeah. fist aesthetic and... Yeah. Narrow, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was probably yeah. the best physique of all time, you know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, listen, man, we appreciate okay. it so thank much. Thank you so man. much for coming and, uh, on. Thank you, guys. I uh, appreciate it. Thank and, you. Uh, we can do it again when uh, for sure. Yeah.